Welcome to the second episode of Series 39, everyone. I did mention that you're in for a doozy of a series, and it just gets meatier from this point on. We've got myself and Amr on as guests again covering our game, Chimera, a love letter to character creation with Senda from Pandas Talking Games. She's a super geek and gnome stew stepping in to cover co-hosting duties with Amelia. This episode is a long one for sure, but it is so worth it for the nonsense that we dive into here. But before we get to all of that, first, some announcements. Actually, the only announcement that we have right now is that Chimera is currently available on itch.io. We've already fixed a few issues that we've noticed during this recording and have a couple more things to fix in the current version, but the game is fully playable and you too could be creating some wild stories like we've come up with in this series. If you like the world building and character creation of games like Descent into Midnight, you'll probably really enjoy Chimera. So head on over to play.chimera.games and pick up your very own copy. All proceeds will go right back into the game to add more art, mostly, and get us a head start on the Kickstarter. And for every $15 that the project earns, including tips, we will add another community copy to the pile so someone else is able to grab a copy if they are unable to afford it at this time, or if they just want to check it out before committing. Again, that's at play.chimera.games, which will take you directly to the itch page. We don't have anything else to announce for today since the episode is so super long. So we will see you right back here after the show for the call to action. Until then, enjoy the show. episode of Character Creation Cast, we blended together magical girl and superhero genres and created a D12-shaped world where each pent was its own biome, where gravity worked differently along the lines between them. In this world, we began populating our characters by blending two character archetypes together. Amelia was blending the demigod archetype from the superhero genre and the leader archetype from the magical girl genre. Senda was blending the mask from the magical girl genre with the hopeful from the superhero genre. Amr was blending the innovator and the weapon, both from the superhero genre, and I was blending the spirit from the magical girl genre and the stranded from the superhero genre. We are picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Okay, so now that that's set, let me go ahead and populate the playbooks. Um, and this is probably going to crash everybody's sheets because I don't know how to fix that yet mm. with the scripting. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, get that worked out quick. Uh, it's going to require a few restarts. I have to authorize it first because this is a brand new sheet. Uh, yeah, please. Allow I did Google most popular baby names of 1984. In case anybody was wondering. <laughs> oh dear. I hadn't All even right, thought about so, that part yet. Usually when it gets to names, I go, uh, 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 ooh, I look do at my too. Bookshelf. That's why I have kept <laughs> baby name books um, entirely yes. for naming characters. And yes. and I've, I've learned now to start thinking about it sooner uh, because I foolishly am terrible at naming things, but made a show about naming characters, making characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. But 
Jennifer, Jessica, Ashley, Amanda, Sarah, Stephanie, Nicole, all the ones you would think of are like the I popular. actually literally, I was like, you're going to go with Jennifer, Jessica, Ashley? That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah, Jessica like, Parker, just right? List them yeah. down, right? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I should. I'm going to name her um, uh, Rachel, Danielle, Michelle. <laughs> there you go. You're done. You know I'm just going to call her Danielle, Michelle. Danielle, Danielle Michelle. Michelle. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is my character, Danielle Michelle. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just going to have you, like, pick a random starting point and, like, read three names, and I'll just well, go. let's see how many are on this list. 50. Oh, and you don't have any dice, 50. though. I was going to say, okay. roll some dice. Uh, that's okay. Start at, like, 24. Okay. 24. Here you go. Emily, Aaron, Angela, Kelly, Andrea, Lisa, Catherine, <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, I'm going to be Emily, Aaron, I, okay, we'll we'll put a, some sort Emily, of. Emily, Aaron, Angela? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like that's it. We're done here. Okay. I mean, because you could also go uh, Sarah, Mary, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lindsay, Lindsay, Shannon. There's two different Lindsay, Lindsay, Shannon. <laughs> two different spellings of Lindsay. So oh, Lindsay, no. Lindsay, Shannon. <laughs> Please be Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. Lindsay, you're right. I'm definitely <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. Is it S E Y and then S A Y or S A Y? Lindsay, Lindsay. E-Y and then A Y. Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. <laughs> wow. Oh my oh, god. What did I say? Gracious. I was Mich- Danielle. Danielle Michelle. <laughs> Danielle Michelle. Yeah. I can't write it down, so I will. <laughs> I'll write it down for Thank you. Thank you. Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. So I'm just uh, it's a family reading. name. <laughs> <laughs> so i i renamed the tabs down below uh for the ones that populated our character sheets if you see on the character creation page uh it populated the genres uh for our primary and secondary that means it worked um so it's interesting we we have two people uh amelia and amar both have uh superheroes for the primary and uh senda and i of course have magical girls for the primary i mean who couldn't see that coming um, I know, right? Shocked. And then uh, for secondary, we've only got one magical girl represented and the rest superheroes. So uh, very interesting blend here. I like it. Well, that's because Senda took my mask from me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I figured it was your game and you probably played oh, yeah, everything. No, no. It, it, it's different plan. I, I went to superheroes. Mm-hmm. I mean, Genius was still there. If I wanted to take my favorite, like, actual magical genius. girl, I could have yep. taken Genius. <laughs> so it's, it's fine. I got really excited about playing this. Mask is just, yeah, I'm, I'm just very glad that we got that. <laughs> Mask is one that I think, we'll, we'll see the details of it in a minute, but it's one that I'm I'm pretty happy with how we made it work out, mm-hmm. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we have our primary and secondary archetypes selected for each of our characters. And if you look at the tab that is now named with your name, mm-hmm. um it has the sheets side by side. So what we are looking at here is on the left-hand side is your primary character sheet, uh, and the right-hand side is your secondary. Um, And if you scroll down, uh, you'll notice that the top page is basically who you are as an individual, including uh, like your abilities and stuff like that. And then the second page is down below are all of your moves. So that's kind of what you can do effectively. But if we look at uh, our character sheet there, uh, the first step that we have listed here is we go over the name, looks, gender, uh, ancestry, and age. You don't have to fill out all of those right away. You can fill those out as you know them uh, throughout the process or at the very end, whichever. But uh, we can go over them a little bit here. Uh, Like we have the gender umbrella and you can select all that apply here uh, for for different types of uh, genders, gender combinations, um, etc. And the reason we have these here is uh, when I was talking with Brandon um, about masks in our second series, Brandon said, I see Latin uh, characters, Hispanic Latin is one of the options. I'm Hispanic Latin. So therefore, I see myself in this game. And this is one of the first games that allowed me to see myself in it and how important that was. So having this gender umbrella was to allow others to to see themselves 
being characters within this world, right on the character sheet from the get-go. Uh, so that's why we put that there. So there's the gender umbrella. There's looks. Uh, looks uh, have kind of a like more uh, nebulous uh, look on top to a more like uh, like uh, Asian, South Asian, uh, black, Middle Eastern, white, etc. Um, on the bottom. So you can choose any number of those. Um, and then there are archetype looks. So these are a combination of two uh, alliterative words that you would select one pair per side. So you'll end up with four pairs, four words effectively that give you an overall impression of what your character looks like. And you get to decide what that means. And I found the easiest way to select these is just to select which ones you want and use the, the bucket option to, to color it a different color. Make the magic Google spreadsheets happen. Yeah. I wish there was an easy way to just click on them. Right, and, and have them color. But uh, there, there are limitations to spreadsheet character sheets. Mm -hmm. So we can fill out what we want here. For once, I know my name. Oh, are you going Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon? Of course I oh, am. I love it. There we go. And I'd like to point out that all of the archetype looks are unique to each archetype. There is no archetype that has the same words in it as any other archetype. Ryan put a lot of effort into that. That's why he's pointing it out. Yeah. <laughs> they spent a lot of time. A lot of time with those the right. So we have 30 archetypes planned for the full release. That's six pairs of alliterative words per archetype. Uh, and then there's some sort of math there that tells you how many yeah, that is. Three pairs. So there, there's 90 pairs of alliterative words or 108 unique words for looks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that lot. is a lot of that's a lot don't of don't ever stop and think about the scope of chimera <laughs> or it it, and just work on it, it. <laughs> just do it just, you just do get it. things done and then then don't stop to think yeah. about it it's small chunks at a time we're doing the hard yes. work so when people start making modules later on uh they just have to follow a formula and it's and yeah. it works out fine oh okay is everyone settled in on looks or does anyone need a bit more time I think I got my looks. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm mine just are defining my character right now. I'm going to keep my name and stuff for later uh, just because. Okay, so after we're done with looks uh, or done enough with looks, uh, then we move on to our um, abilities. Uh, now, this is uh, the thing that will tell us what sort of like narrative powers we're able to kind of hook into. Uh, throughout play and if you look at the abilities it uh, it'll tell you what you kind of start with uh, so for uh, most of the magical girls you start with like basic basic magic abilities and limited flight and and probably two more options uh, that are all available only when you're transformed right um, and uh, you would do that for both your primary and your secondary so there'd be a lot there but I realize that I'm I'm looking at all of these, and I don't know if we should save our selections until the end for looks when we lock those in, or if we should discuss them. Oh, sharing them now. Yeah, that's I. Uh, that's a good question. That's. Uh, I say let's talk about looks and then we'll go to abilities because otherwise cool. I think that's too much to share all at once. Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. The host has decided. Yeah. <laughs> this is my show, darn it. <laughs> it's your show now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yours too. <laughs> I know, it's great. I feel a little bit like the usurper. <laughs> <laughs> that's Swooped different from the sidelines. There you go. This is it's a villain archetype. <laughs> Uh, so do we want to go in, in order of uh, tab placement? Oh, sure. Why not? <laughs> um, so we're just going over looks right now, right? Yep. I don't have to talk mm -hmm. about anything else. Okay. For my gender umbrella, I chose woman. Um, I picked my looks as feminine. I haven't really picked... I, 
I didn't really pick any of the more like um real life sort of um like nationality kind of things um because i just haven't decided how that translates to our uh dodecahedron planet yet i don't really know Mm -hmm. how that how that copies onto it um but for my archetype look i picked angsty and arduous and for my uh, secondary playbook, I picked Assured and Aspiring because I just wanted to be really alliterative. <laughs> All, <laughs> All the, days. the quad All the days. alliteration. Yeah. Angsty, arduous, <laughs> assured, and aspiring. Yeah. That's what I've got for you. My character's name is Danielle Michelle. Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> my pronouns are she, her. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Uh, perfect. So I, uh, I also picked woman for the moment. It could be up for debate later, but it's a starting point. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and my name is Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon, and I'm using she, her. And uh, my looks are ambiguous. And then my archetypes, my archetype looks are mysterious and magnetic, bright and beaming. Um, that's where mm. we're going with that. So we're both mysterious like and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. All right. Yeah. All right, I guess next 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 up is me. Mm-hmm. So hi, I'm creating Nisp, aka Torpedo. Uh, they are non-binary, gender fluid, um, feminine and shifting looks, ooh, as well as Middle Eastern. And their archetype looks are techy and tremendous, explosive and empowered. The first from the innovator, the second from the weapon, and also. Uh, their ancestry is the ocean pent. Ooh, awesome! Cool. Oh, I didn't even see that box over on the secondary one. I, I was like, I've missed, I've missed some boxes, but I also did the same thing mm-hmm. as Amelia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can also choose your ancestry, uh, your age, uh, that sort of stuff as well uh, is on the secondary uh, archetype page near the I top. I think I'm like 19. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like if we're uh, going magical girls, we're all like high school age, be like, right? Youngish, yeah. High school to college is generally the genre of conventions. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll uh, also be nineteen. Cool. Okay. Also, there's a box for pronouns as well, and I went with any slash all. I didn't come up with an alias yet either. I know. Let's go to alias. Man, they were talking. See, about I went with the ocean <laughs> pent, and then from there, I came up with the name torpedo. Uh, <laughs> See, smart. Uh, you yeah, were on yeah. top of it. <laughs> all right, Ryan, tell us about you. All right, uh, my character's name is Oxyardia Fleblian Forgsyak, um, mm-hmm. otherwise known as Ox. Uh, she, they pronouns. Uh, picked a uh, woman and uh, Demi for my gender umbrella, uh, Shifting for the looks, and Other uh, for the looks as well, uh, with Ethereal and Evocative, and Alien and Ambiguous. Um, I'm mm-hmm. stranded, so... I don't think I'm from this world. So we'll see what that means. <laughs> awesome. I guess if I'm a demigod, like, ancestry is, like, part god. Right. Yeah. And, but part not, right? Right. I'm interested <laughs> to find out, like, part what and part what. Yeah. Yeah. Part I mean, suburbs, part um, space. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> space. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Oh, I'm interested to see. I think I need to know more about think. my abilities before I can make an alias. I feel yeah, like. yeah, I'm going back and forth on a bunch of stuff still, trying to yeah. figure out. Yeah, we um, we can dive into abilities now if we want. Or I have a question first. Yeah, what do y'all think the like human adaptation for the farming pent is? Oh, mm. interesting. Um. I feel like your body is adapted seasonally. Like you sleep more in winter and you're awake more in summer. Uh, Was that like sleep storing or something? Yeah. You're like a bear. You can hibernate in the winter. (laughs) Probably a bit physically stronger, maybe. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm just interested. Like, I was like, I wonder what that would be. Like, I don't, I'm going to say that that's where I'm from. Nice. Or at least where my parents were from. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Okay, sorry. Please it, carry it, it on. It can Abilities. always change until we're done. It might. It may change. <laughs> it's very possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now we can select abilities, and uh, we should all have, uh, I think, six uh, things to choose between for your primary and secondary. 
Um, yep. And most of us will generally have uh, two of each to choose uh, at character creation. Um, I don't, it looks like the hopeful is probably the only one that might be different. Uh, and, oh, and the demigod, of course. So what? the hopeful uh, is you're allowed to choose three, but you don't start with anything because you're kind of got your uh, abilities somehow uh, after being a normal person for any number of time, right? Um, sure. But then the demigod has to choose a domain and that domain kind of flavors all of their uh, godly abilities in the the primary move of the demigod, the the default move, which is uh, divinity. And we'll go over that when we get to the move section. But um, so, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how this all plays out. Hey Ryan, guess which uh, domain I'm gonna pick? Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> There's too many good abilities, Armor. <laughs> Why do we only let people pick two? <laughs> Balance. I know. Nonsense. The rules of the game don't exist, and you can pick as many or as few abilities as fit your character. We can't. We can't bend the rules. Yeah, we can. Okay, technically, it's we're the game. designer. It's our game, and anyway. I'm going to go by rules as written. Boring. I know. <laughs> uh, For the purposes of showing people what you've created, I will follow your rules, but only this <laughs> once. No, you got one rule for the This is pass. it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think that works. Oh, but... All right. Okay, I got mine. Okay, I got mine. I think you were the last one, so... Should I go first again? Yeah, go for it. So for my demigod playbook, I got to select um, my parents' primary domain for my ability. Uh, and surprising everyone, I picked life and death. <laughs> now you're all shocked. Um, my other choices were elements, dreams, invention, uh, nature, and weather. Mm -hmm. But no, life and death. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I got to pick basic magic abilities. Uh, I picked group healing magic and illusion magic because it's cool. That is pretty cool. Ooh. All right. Um, cool. So I also start with basic magic abilities and limited flight. Mm -hmm. um, and then I selected from my further list um, the abil ability to summon weapons and mask magic <laughs> because if you're playing the mask archetype how could you not choose mask magic <laughs> like, what, mask what is mask magic, magic? I don't know. Okay. we don't know i wasn't sure if this was like a thing that i should like a concept i should understand or if this is mm -hmm. just like play to find out Play to that's find that's out. the yeah. thing, right? Is uh, yeah. in Powered by the Apocalypse, all of these uh, abilities are define it as you believe it to be working. Sure. I just wasn't sure if that was like a trope I should be aware of and was not. No, it's just a cool okay. thing that we threw in there. Cool. Mm -hmm. Love it. Cool. Um, for my for my secondary archetype, the hopeful, um, I got to choose three abilities, but that's all I get. Um, and I chose impossible movement, energy manipulation, and reality manipulation Ooh, because why not? Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. I'm up cool. next. So for the innovator, I have a wide array of gadgets that I invented, and I get two other one specific ones. I went with power armor and ranged weapons. That's awesome. Nice. As the weapon, I'm a trained martial artist and excel at all forms of combat. I choose. Two other things that in augment my combat, and I have heavy weapons and future tech weapons. So like oh, 1982 good. weapons. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Styled as 1984. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you all, like I, I've got fancy rockets. Okay, these ones go like Mach two. All right, they go faster. Um, some of the other options I could have taken for innovator were advanced AI assistant, enhanced vehicles, martial artist, or utility belt. And for the weapon, I could have taken melee, range, combat magic, or weaponized vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Uh, for me, the spirit and the stranded. Uh, for the spirit, I get basic magic abilities and limited flight while I'm transformed. But I also can see and talk to spirits. And I have spiritual movement. Um, and then for the stranded, I'm strong and resilient normally. And I have access to future technology and psionics slash weird magic. Mm -hmm. This is this is going to be an interesting crew. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next thing, we got our abilities down. Uh, next is the dice mechanics, assigning attitudes. Yeah. Do you mind if I take this one? Go for it. So we have, as mentioned earlier, attitudes in this game. Uh, they are sort of your outlooks on the world or approaches to problem and how effective you are at tackling situations using certain approaches. The five are logical, optimistic, valiant, energetic, relaxed. Logical has to do with your ability to solve problems by thinking it through, your uh, coming at it from a rational, reasonable perspective. Optimistic is your hopefulness, your uh, your ability to tackle things by just seeing the best in the situation and hoping for the best outcome to achieve itself. Valiant is how brave you are and also how foolhardy you are, how much you're willing to rush into a situation and just brute force your way through to the solution. Energetic has to do with how much energy you have uh, it's, it's how excitable you can get it's how much force and excitement and energy and uh speed and the like that you can put behind an action and relaxed comes from the opposite perspective it's how well you are approaching things from a thoughtful perspective from a take a second to calm yourself see through the situation approach things with a level-headed emotional state mm-hmm in, instead of having numbers associated with these attitudes, you have dice. Um, so to start with, you get a set of dice that you see on your character sheet. There are 2d4, 6d6, and 2d8. You can assign these in any combination to any of the attitudes. And once you assign an, a die to an attitude, you can just mark it off on the list so that you don't double up on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make any combination of dice. The only thing that you have to keep in mind is you can't have anything, you can't have 2d4 in one attitude, um, and you can't have 2d10 in one attitude, but every other combination is allowed. And we don't, don't have, have d10s, off, d10s on here. Not, not right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's the, that's the <laughs> next step. Checking. Sure. Okay. I, yep. I think that's impossible in character creation to get. Um, no, you can. Yep. It's possible. Uh, but it's not possible right, because yes, it's in the rules yes. that you're not supposed to. Right, because you have you have one one free. You could up, assign two d eight yes. to one attitude right. and then upgrade up, both of them. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Never mind. Ignore that. Ignore it's, that. It's fine. So uh, this is the part that is the hardest thing I think for most people to grok right away. Um. Uh, but once you once you understand it, it it kind of clicks and it's hard to forget about it. Um, so if, if at any point you have questions about this portion, let, let us know and we can help walk you through it. Um, but effectively on the sheets that we have here, we have drop downs for the different die types. Mm -hmm. So you can select which two dice you want next to each attitude and then just mark off uh, the dice that you use like for instance um i think i want a relatively logical person so i'm going to choose a d6 and a d8 for my logical and i'm just going to check off that i've used one d6 and one of my d8s and then i i continue on from there until all 10 of my dice pool are assigned to my uh my different attitudes gotcha I, for example, wanted the opposite of that, so I put a D4 and a D6 in my logical. Does it matter which one goes first and which one goes nope. second? Okay. Does not matter. This is really interesting because um, I immediately, since especially Amir, since you said you were dreaming about dice, you know, result curves and that sort of thing. So um, does a D6 and a D8 drastically change where that, or so like... If you put mm -hmm. a D4 and a D8, is that drastically different than a D6 and a D6? 
Have, have you it mapped it all, changes all of this out? Mapped all of this out. <laughs> I'm fascinated. <laughs> yeah, yes. So you're asking me uh, if I've mapped it all out, and I have. Oh yes. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> this, this dice system was created because of the math that Amber did. I figured that it had to be like, and I, I I'm really interested to hear like how that affects. Yeah. Like your end results. Um. So I mean, they both end up averaging about the same. Or sorry, they both end up averaging exactly the same. Uh, you just get a slightly different curve, mm -hmm. where yeah. the uh, 2d6 has your standard bell curve, where they come up to a single peak, and then mm -hmm. your d4 and d8 ends up with a, a curve that like peaks at five and has the exact same chances of rolling anything between a five and a nine because of the fact that you can make a five without any of the numbers on a d4 plus a number from a d8. You can make a nine with any of the numbers on d4 plus a number on d8 on a 10 you have to roll high on the d4 and decently high on the d8 as well mm -hmm. etc uh they end up being roughly the same there are some situations where like one's a little bit more consistent at hitting mixed successes and another is better at hitting the outlying etc but that doesn't really matter much mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reason that I was wondering is because, like, since we have two D8s in our dice pool to kind of assign, it's like, from the perspective of being able to, um, I'm, I'm usually the kind of player who's like, I'm going to be really good at something, and maybe not as good at this other stuff, or like, um, or I might be the kind of player who's like, I want to be really good at this sometimes, but really bad at it sometimes, mm -hmm. and maybe I want this to be a little swingy or something like that, mm -hmm. just to be interesting, like, thinking about how to apply those D8s and those D4s mm -hmm. in interesting ways to make interesting things happen. Because yeah. um, that's, yeah, this it's not a it's not a rolling combination that I have messed with a lot. Yeah. 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 Um, what I like to do is assign the D8s and the D4s and then fill the D6s in with the rest that's remaining. Yeah. Right. The, po the point is that you generally can look at these and go, okay, the bigger the die, the better it is. And you don't worry yeah. too much about the combination. Um, because, and the point that like one of the advantages or one of the reasons why we went with this over just the standard plus numerical stats is it gives a tactile feel to how, what your stat is rather than a numerical, okay, I am this much better at this one than the other. Even though that numerical distinction is still there because, uh, I mean, if you go up a die size, you're going up one point average. So it's, it's a plus one, but it feels yeah. slightly different. Yeah, no, it was really interesting because mm -hmm. I, I sort of just laid things out, skeletoned them in yeah. a little bit to see like where I wanted the D8s and the D4s. And yeah. I ended up putting a D4 and a D8. And then I was like, wait, is this actually functionally going to change my experience of the game very much versus if I had just put this like down the middle D6, D6. And that's why I was wondering about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Math and rocks. and I one thing to keep in mind too, you know, <laughs> based on your answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and one, and like, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we're going to be stepping up three dice uh, in total here with the secondary uh, playbook. The secondary playbook is going to be augmenting these choices a little bit. And then we get to just assign, we get to step up any one die uh, once those those are assigned. So... Um, we're basically upgrading three of these dice. Okay. Also, just, just Ryan, you can edit this out, but send it for your reference. The difference yeah. between a D4 and a D8 and 2D6 is 2D6 has a 2% higher chance of getting a success overall, or a 1.5% higher chance, roughly. But 2D8 has a 1.5% higher chance of getting, or sorry, 1D8, 1D4 1D, plus 1D8 has a 1.5% yeah. higher chance of getting a 10 plus, or... Oh, that's so, interesting. So, that, so it is a little bit swingier if you say 1D4, 1D8. A little bit. Yeah. 1.5% like is not going to matter. It's not going to matter. No one's going to notice. Yeah. It's, it's, the it's there, though. Gamer, it's you? there, though. <laughs> it's there, though. You're more likely to, hit, you're 1.5% you're chance more likely to miss or get a critical rather than hit the middle. <laughs> yeah. through the thing. Yeah. Are you well, are you willing to gamble? <laughs> yeah, I mean the end result of, on that tiny percentage there was I just I was like no we'll put both the d8s in one thing so that it's yeah. like yes you're really good at this thing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you because that's really interesting um, to think about in terms of character yeah. decision stuff right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and it looks like we've got all of our uh, base uh, dice pool selected. So the next thing to do is to look to the right on the secondary ar archetype page. There's the archetype attitude adjustments. Um, so this is uh, a three-step process where you are going to select one attitude from each pair below. Um, and you'll see two different pairs. Uh, for me, it says optimistic or valiant, and then logical or relaxed. And what I will select is which one I feel my character more embodies because of having the secondary archetype. And then uh, for each of the selected attitudes, we'll take one of the two dice in that attitude and step it up to the next die level. So a D8 becomes a D10, D6 becomes a D8, D4 becomes a D6. Okay. And then once that is done, you can take any one die that you have and step it up to the next level as long as it doesn't give you 2d10 in one attitude okay so with that i think um well, if everybody's all set there's gonna be a, a lot of dice i feel like maybe an interesting thing to do might be to choose two stats you want to highlight like two that you think you have dice pools you want to share mm-hmm because, like, if we just go through, all right, I have D4, D6, logical, D6, D6, optimistic, right. D8, yeah. D10, oh. valiant, D8, D6, D8, energetic, <laughs> D4, D8, relaxed. All right, let's do that three more times. That is not going to be good audio. <laughs> so I can tell you, for example, that for logical, I have a D10 and a D6. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I'm pretty logical. For relaxed, I have a D4 and a D6. Not relaxed. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a good way to tackle it because I was also going to talk about my two that I made the most drastic, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I am most valiant mm. um, where I have a D8 and a D10. And um, I am least optimistic where I have a D6 and a D4. Interesting. Grumpy team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm joining into the Valiant Squad also with a D8 yes. and a D10. Well done. Uh, <laughs> and while logical is my worst, I'm going to share my relaxed, which is a D4 and a D8. All right. Nice. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, after that, after that whole D4 D8 conversation. <laughs> I I'm I'm kind of mixed in mine. My goodness, I've got two that are kind of tied for best, logical and Valiant, but. In different ways, my logical is a D6 and a D10. My valiance mm -hmm. 2D8. Um, and I power gamed a little bit because I know you can't update an attitude that's at a D8 and the D10 uh, later on. But you can upgrade a D8 and the D8 to a D8 and the D10. Anyway, it's gotcha. a whole line. Uh, my worst tide, are, which is very interesting, the two opposite uh, attitudes, energetic and relaxed, are both D4 and D6. Mm -hmm. um so i don't know what my character feels like <laughs> yep. just really middle of the road like rela yeah. a relaxed ball of anxiety i don't know <laughs> the, the, the way my stats came about it's kind of interesting just because i put a d4 and a d6 in logical and relax initially because i wanted those to be my worst ones but i had to choose for a bonus between relaxed and logical for my secondary so that's how i ended up there <laughs> that, that's interesting gotcha i was like no i care more about this awful logical than i do about the awful mm -hmm. relaxed so <laughs> so so that's how the uh the attitudes work uh, in Chimera. Um, and then if you get a an advantage, say, uh, during play, then when you roll with your next uh, attitude, you'll choose one of your dice and step that die up to the next level. Uh, okay. So you could be rolling 2d10 uh, for a roll if, if you have a maxed out attitude uh, and it has advantage. Uh, similarly, uh, disadvantage steps down one of your dice or cancels out advantage and vice versa. So for our lovely D D4, D6 friends, we could end up 2D4, yep. which is a really interesting one because statistically it's pretty close to like having a minus two, but you physically can't roll a 10 plus on that mm -hmm. yeah. without assistance. Yep. Yeah. And that's kind of the point, right? And and that's where your 2D4s feel very heavy, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which, I, which I love as a GM especially. Um, okay, so we've got all can of that. I, can I interrupt? I, we're probably going to get there because we're going to get to moves. Yeah. But I am now really fascinated. So are your dice ranges for moves? Is it the standard one through six, seven to nine, yep. eight to ten? Yep. Yeah. Seven, seven, uh, seven to nine, nine eight to ten. Yep. Ten plus. Ten to, uh, <laughs> yeah. And for a lot of moves, we actually have a 13 plus. 
uh, yes. range, uh, which augments the 10 plus result. Yeah. Um, right. And and that's only possible, obviously, if you have higher than 2d6 that you're rolling yep. or yeah. with yeah. assistance. A d6 and a d8 or a d4 and a d10 at minimum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Please carry on. I'm sorry. Not a problem. Um, so the next thing that we talk about, uh, surprise, surprise, is moves. So that's the next thing we'll be selecting. Um, so all of our character sheets on the second pages at the very bottom, uh, these are all of uh, the moves that we can select from. Um, and there's there's quite a few. Uh, most have four additional moves to select from and uh, possibly a default move or two. Um, but everyone has a signature move as well. Um, and and Amri, you, you have a good... Uh, uh, pitch for what the signature moves kind of embody. Yeah, I mean, so the signature moves are basically. Do I have a good pitch? Sure, I'll make a good pitch. The signature moves are what sort of defines the core focus or the defining moments of your story. So when you think of the iconic characters or moments for that archetype. What are the moments that make them uniquely that archetype? For some of them, it's like the big defining moments of their plot. But for some of them, it's also the thing they can consistently do in a way that no one else can. Uh, and we try to like make sure that they are things that can apply to either those grand, memorable, character defining moments, but also the small daily things they can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll notice that the, the primary uh, archetypes have the signature move selected. Uh, and the secondaries are not because we would have to advance into the secondary um, to gain that that uh, link to that defining move. Um, but like, for instance, for the spirit, uh, this move lets me uh, call upon the spiritual world ahead of a confrontation and or during a moment of respite to protect your friends. And uh, all of our signature moves rolls with questions. And that's taken from uh, Brandon Leon Gambetta's uh, Passion de las Passiones, uh, which is a brilliant way to do uh, a statless uh, PBTA game. Uh, whereas with PB with uh, Passion, uh, every yes answer gives you a plus one, but here you start with two d six, and every yes answer steps up your die to the next level. Uh, so every yes will go uh, to a d8 and d6 and then 2d8 and then a d8 and a d10 if all three of them apply so at the top of your moves sheet you'll actually see what is included on each of your character sheets so uh, most of us it'll be start with your signature move and default moves and select two additional moves um amelia i believe the demigod's the weirdest one here okay because you start with the default move divinity mm -hmm. and this this move is pretty unique in that you have two trials that you have to select here that uh, from this list of six different trials and if you do these during a session then you start filling up your path to ascension and oh. it's it's effectively another progression track right oh okay once the path to a session uh, ascension fills up, then you are allowed to select another divine gift. The caveat is, if you select all of your divine gifts, then your character becomes an NPC because they've ascended to godhood. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember, Amr. Did we uh, decide whether or not we we're going to be crossing one of these out? This version. I say yes. You think so? Okay. I think so. Let's do it. Um, so starting out, Amelia, mm -hmm. you'll select one divine gift that you start with. Gotcha. And these are things that give you, like the gift of strength. You are granted the strength of a god, uh, but you are sometimes too strong for mere mortals. So when you engage your enemies with someone who cannot withstand godly strength, you have to add show restraint to your list of choices. Um, and then each gift has a special that if you mark one of your path to ascension slots, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. you can do this special thing. So for strength, it's perform an impossible act of strength. This is your literally move mountains sort of move. Um, but each of the six gifts um, have different flavors to them, different consequences when you're dealing with mortality um, and all sorts of stuff like that. On top of that, you're going to select one of these gifts to completely strike out that you can never advance into. This is just not part of your godly lineage, effectively. Okay. This is something new that we're kind of toying with to see uh, how it goes over. So I start with one, and then there's one that I can't take. Yeah, that you can't ever uh, progress into. So do we select anything from our secondary sheet at all, or that's just for advancements? Depends on your uh, secondary archetype. For you, the hopeful, uh, Mm -hmm. it says you start with your default moves, if any, and then select one from additional moves. So you get to select one of your four additional moves on your secondary sheet, um, in addition to the two uh, on your primary that you've already selected. And can... Okay, so but it can't be the signature move. Correct. Okay. Yeah, it has to be from the additional moves uh, pile of moves. Cool. Um, because the signature move you specifically have to advance into. Okay. The best of us. Is this bombshell? <laughs> I'm just. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was having a, a me moment there. <laughs> <laughs> I know the reference. It may or may not have played into the name of the move. I was wondering if it had. (laughs) I'm influenced by a lot of things. uh, uh, Apparently, my shows are some of them. (laughs) Seriously. Well, your shows are like literally some of the first shows I've listened to uh, of all podcasts. So, I mean, I'm flattered. It's good content. (laughs) Thanks. I think I've got mine. I think I've got mine, but I need to look at your basic moves sheet really quickly. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. I'm good. Awesome. My choices were way easier than Amelia's. Yeah. (laughs) Unfortunately, Demigod's one of the more uh, complicated playbooks. Yeah. It's, um, there's a lot happening. Mm Mm-hmm. Of course, um, there is a, a group activity here. Um, the Magical Companion from the leader, uh, default move. Uh, you get to work with the group to define our magical companion. That's true. So, uh, what do we need? <laughs> Name, pronouns, what it is, and personality. Yep. Um, Should we start well, with I know Cinder really wants it to be a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're not going real Western with our, like, dodecahedron planet here. Mm-hmm. So, I know. Um, I guess there's not really a place for a horse in the city. In the mm-hmm. not, yeah, it would be. I think it might stand out of it. Um, yeah. Um, what if it was like a pigeon? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> it's a rat. It's just a rat. Just a flying just a rat. rat. You know, like. <laughs> but it's a magical rat. Yeah. It's like the most beautiful rat you've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, because it's a city, and that's just you know. Yeah. But. <laughs> Um. Little, ma- little magical rat with a <laughs> with a dodecahedron uh, crescent moon. <laughs> yeah, just or just just the dodecahedron, like just crest. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If it was well, if it was it was a crescent. So is our moon shaped like a dodecahedron? Also, do we have like several dodecahedron? Do we have like polyhedral moons of different? <gasps> because like the thing is that like the moon is round and it's crescent because it's like blocked by the light of another round thing. Right, so, so like, would how would it blocky. also be pentagonally? Yeah. I want to draw this, but I can't because I have a janky hand. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I oh, like the on. idea of multiple moons of different... Uh, <laughs> different polygons? Different, different polygons. Poly- poly- <laughs> We're just going to go There's all the way. This is a dice in our system, and yes. they are... A uh, triangle <laughs> and a square, <laughs> and, <laughs> and in the very center is a d20, whatever that the is. The d20 right? sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or we could go with D100. That's very round of you, yes. Yeah. 
But then it could be either a D100 or like two side by side. Can twin sons that are a D10 <laughs> and a D100? Yes. <laughs> I can't even draw a pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, this solar system just went further off the rails. Oh, uh, <laughs> physics. Who like. needs it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> what is it good for? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, but so back to the magical campaign. Right. <laughs> Actually, yeah. it just has the shapes of all of the polyhedral dice oh, on its yeah, back, just like, like across in a row. In a row, oh, like, it's and back. down its tail. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, it's a rat. That's, that's, yep. Right? It's a rat. Yes. It's magical I hate rat. It, but it's a rat. Can, that can speak. <laughs> that can speak. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'll put that in parentheses here. Now, important question. When it talks, does it talk like this? Hi, I'm your rat friend. I speak in a very high squeak. Or, hello, I'm your rat companion. That one. <laughs> it's a very low voice, today? but yeah. a definite, like, New York Brooklyn accent. <laughs> 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 Talk in a low voice. All right, Bubble, listen up. <laughs> We're walking down the street here, and you're getting in the way of the team. So I need you to get on your A game. All right. All right. Look up. Look down at me when I talk to you. All right. Look, look me in the eyes. <laughs> see me? There. You see all Clarified. one inch? And <laughs> okay. I love this rat. Hey, I'm scurrying so here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so much. much. Um, what is a good name for uh, uh, Brock? I don't know. A, a Brooklyn rat in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, his name is Lorenzo. I think Lorenzo is okay, a good name. Sure, mm. I love that. Lorenzo, Lorenzo, the rat. Yeah. Uh, he it's a me, Lorenzo. <laughs> now I need you to understand that I am scurrying over here, so I need you to. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, it sounds like he's extremely bossy. <laughs> yeah. Are we, are we going? Are we going? He him? We've sort of defaulted in that direction. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to him. like confirm and verify those are the pronouns. <laughs> yeah. Right I think so. Let's do it. That feels correct okay. to me. It's bossy okay. little rat. Bossy, bossy little Brooklyn <laughs> Brooklyn rat that probably drinks pizza around. Right. Um, yeah. Any Have other personality just... traits that he needs? Spossy. Um, definitely knows the subway system better than you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Enjoys pizza. Enjoys pizza. Okay. Definitely enjoys pizza. <laughs> We've just created Master Splinter from TMNT. <laughs> <laughs> We've just created Master Splinter. Yeah. I'm not complaining. I'm just acknowledging it. <laughs> Only regular rat. Well, yeah. Like actual Tiny yeah. baby rat. Tiny baby rat. I mean, should we just name him Splinter? No, Lorenzo. No, Lorenzo. We Lorenzo. don't want to infringe on copyrights. Okay. That's true. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But everybody knows how I feel about Ninja Turtles anyway. So. Uh huh. But he's got a little stick that he props himself up on sometimes. Uh, okay. And it's the stick straw. has like it's a, a it's like a is a little splintered. It's it's okay. a metal straw with like a little piece <laughs> broken off it. Mm-hmm. Ugh. <laughs> The uh, best job. Uh-huh. I guess this All is right. sort of a dirty city if we expect rats everywhere. <laughs> it's a city. It doesn't have to be dirty. I mean, they well, could be clean rats. Well, we didn't say rats everywhere. It's just that Lorenzo is there. Oh, just Lorenzo is just Just Lorenzo. Rat. Yeah. Okay. There's lots of pigeons and Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got pigeons. Here it's pigeons. Has a straw. <laughs> Yeah, it's a straw. It's I didn't want to type anymore. My hand really hurts. It's part of it. It's, okay. uh, it's good. It's fine. It has a straw. You guys know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We understand. Okay. All right. And then you get one additional move on your leader. Um, hmm. And then you should be all set. I don't feel like I really want to roll with optimistic. That doesn't sound. <laughs> I know. I it's a up. good. It's a good way to level up. I mean, that's fair. Because on, on a miss, you get XP. Yeah, I don't feel like I would accept responsibility for things, though. <laughs> mm. That's fair. I feel like huddle okay, up is yeah. a good Okay, yeah, I'm actually changing my mind. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to change my mind, too. Okay. Are we all set? I think so. Um, so what did you choose, Amelia? Uh, For for which thing? For back, uh, back let's, to the... Let's go with your demigod first. Uh, what okay. did you choose for your uh, your trials, right? Sure. Um, oh, yeah, trials. So I picked uh, risking yourself to protect innocence and showing no mercy. Because nice. they sounded cool. 
Yeah. So yeah. now every time you do that in a session, um, you mark one on your path to ascension. Uh, it effectively proves yourself uh, to your deity uh, parent. And uh, once that fills up, you you clear your path and select another gift. Um, and then for the divine gifts, the one that I picked was gift of magic. Uh, granted the magic of a god. You easily lose sight of the ordinary around you. I thought that was fun since we picked like mostly mundane world. Mm -hmm. um, pretty brilliant. I, I like <laughs> yeah. the idea of it just being like kind of out of touch with the fact that it, everybody else sees things as normal. And I'm like, magic. <laughs> um, that sounded fun. Uh -huh. uh, and then for the one I blacked out, I picked a uh, gift of protection. Because mm -hmm. I don't know the other one sounded cool. And that one sounded cool, too, but like less cool, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't That's know, because cool you said I had character. to pick one, so I did. Yep, there you go. That's fine. It's <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, choice there, too. So I, I like seeing this in action. Cool. Um, mine were a little bit more straightforward because I just had to check things off, which is yeah. exciting. So quick rundown. My signature move is Curtain Call, where I get to use my symbolic item to make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm really excited about this, but since I decided it was from the, the farming pent, it's <gasps> like a stock of wheat. I love like, with it. With the fringy bits on the end. Yes. <laughs> um, and you like swish it. And <laughs> foosh, and it like lands, you know, like a rose. I don't know. With a guitar. Um, oh, yeah. With a guitar. <laughs> it's just a random flower. Just a random, <laughs> random reference there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, with a guitar riff, obviously. <laughs> um, and a cape. And you a have cape. a cape, right? Yeah. And a mask. I mean, like you do. Well, if we're doing superheroes and magical girls, I feel like everyone needs to have a cape and a mask. Like, like you especially have a cape and a mask, but like... I definitely... Why are we doing these genres <laughs> if no cape or mask? <laughs> well, yeah. I will say then the top hat is still under consideration. We'll come back to oh, it. Because okay. I um, think that I picked uh, that our superhero costumes were like loud and... and oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Extravagant. Yes, you yeah. did. Yep. Yeah, yeah you did. that was important to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Capes then. Capes. Especially since we have limited flight, so we're not going to be like flying the jet engines or anything. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, my default move is transformation sequence, of course, um, which I, I guess we all have that. I hope we all have that. All, all of us that are magical girls. Yeah. I'm oh, not a magical man, girl. You're not I'm a magical a girl at all, are you? I'm no. Not either. No, you've well, got to. I, I, I guess I am secondarily. <laughs> yep. Secondarily, Listen, so you don't we get have... the default moves. No, you get the default. Yep. Oh, you start with a transform. Okay, so oh, yeah. I do yeah. over here. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. we have a transformation sequence. <laughs> it wasn't one I picked, and I was like worried for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I, what, I, what I need our audience to imagine is uh, three magical girls of various capacity and uh, functionally like. The superhero you can picture with the most guns. Yep. <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one. In a giant, like, armored suit thing, right? Yep. right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, we're over here doing magical girls, and you've got, like, your <laughs> mecha thing going on over here. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. And and is there that moment where like we like we got to do the transformation sequence and you kind of like twiddle your thumbs or something? <laughs> like, what? Oh, I want to be, I want it to be up, a right? scene where like they still like spin, but like nothing happens. <laughs> so yes. like there's like sparkles and everything, and they like you know like do the full turn and everything. No, no, I just want like, more guns. Yeah. It's just more guns. you're just like loading your guns with different various <laughs> clips, and that's your whole yes, transformation. Yes. Sequence. Sparkle, 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 <laughs> sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, awesome. Okay, anyway. Uh, so yeah, so transformation sequences. <laughs> this happens every time we talk about transformation sequences at all. I'm always mm -hmm. like, oh, I just want somebody to make this. Um, cool. So then the ones that I picked were, um, oh, the first one actually didn't have the dramatic entrance specifically built into it, but I definitely picked the most dramatic entrance mm -hmm. to use my wheat, <laughs> <laughs> um, which just helps me make a dramatic entrance because it it gives me, I use my special senses to find the best way to join a scene mm -hmm. in the most dramatic way possible, which <laughs> I love so much. Um, so I definitely took that one. And then I took the one, I'm good for something. <laughs> 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 which is just so I love this playbook, um, which is uh, whenever you try to protect yourself, but putting yourself directly in harm's way to um, roll defend your friends with Valiant, my good thing, Valiant. Um, and then I can um, inspire the person I'm defending in addition to my normal results mm -hmm. and uh, like help them out like that. Yeah. 
Speaking of move names and memes, I just got to give a quick shout out to my work here is done. One of the other moves that they could have yes. taken. Yep. <laughs> I really almost took that one because of the name. I was like, oh. And Your then playbook love, has like, great. I'm helping. My I'm work here is done. Know, Most dramatic just, entrance. I'm good for something. It's, it was so hard to pick because they're so well named. I was just like, I love all of them so much. Um, yeah. So... So then for the super side, um, I got to pick an additional move there. And I did choose the best of us because I feel that one personally, even though it rolls on my worst skill mm -hmm. attitude, sorry, um, which is uh, when you reassure someone um, on the need for heroes, despite their doubts, um, you roll uh, to comfort them with optimistic. And then, um, you know, if you succeed, then you can um, give them advantage or add one to your teamwork pool. Mm hmm. I did honestly pick it because of the name. <laughs> I'm just gonna make should. everyone. I'm, I'm just gonna make everyone in our audience cry real quick. <laughs> You're the best of all of us, Miles. Keep going. <laughs> See that. Anyways, but, and then for me, there's a reference here that if you yes. want to know it, you gotta go listen to the Headspace episodes of She's a Super Geek. Mm -hmm. um, Heartbreaking. Bombshell. Anyway, Bombshell. Um, good. Those are, yeah, those are mine. And uh, yeah, so I will immer all you. Hell yeah. Tell us how many oh, guns yeah. you have. Tell us how many guns uh, you how have. How many guns do I have? Well, my signature move is the right tool for the job, which means when we have prep time, I can just make more guns. Uh, well, more accurately, any gadgets that are appropriate to help us with the situation. Mm -hmm. But we all know guns. what they are. Oh, you, have a, uh, you, you have a plot number of guns? Is that? Yeah, that's basically <laughs> that's, it. it, it it's yeah. Basically it. Uh, I also have built-in weapons. So when I fight with Valiant and I can add, uh, I can catch my opponents off guards with just how many weapons I have built in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I can do that too. Uh, I can build gadgets that replicate the stuff you all do. So, you know, I could technically build a gadget to magical girl transformation sequence. You, you, you really could. You could have mechanical wheat sheaves. <laughs> yes. Yes. I could just look at you and your magical ability to summon wheat weapons and go, I can do that too and make a wheat gun. Uh, anyways. <laughs> From the weapon side, I chose I am just a weapon, uh, which just makes me even better even, at uh, even more of a I weapon. I don't need more guns. I <laughs> am the gun. I am the gun. <laughs> I, hence my name, Torpedo. That's amazing. Wow. Um, I, I love that you lean so much into this. And I love that, like, uh, the right tool for the job could be I need a lockpick set. Yeah. So here's my lockpick set gun. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think this is interesting. Like, Swiss Army gun. <laughs> I could go, like, the innovator, you, you generally think of, like, oh, like, gadgeteer types, you know? And I was just like, gun. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then for me, my signature move on the spirit um, lets me uh, basically prepare by tuning in with the spiritual world and calling upon the, the spirits to help protect my companions. Um, and depending on how well I roll, I can uh, actually bump it up to, like, rolling Defend Your Friends to a 10 plus without actually rolling. But if I do that, I have to force a hard GM move on myself, um, which unlocks GM moves that are not available outside of this move, uh, which is interesting. Um, and of course I got a transformation sequence and I chose ward off evil spirits, uh, which lets me uh, ward off evil spirits or entities. <laughs> Whoa. Um, with Didn't Valiant. See that I know, right? <laughs> no. um, and then commune with spirits, uh, which uses one of my worst stats, energetic, uh, to try to commune with spirits for answers. Um, and then on the stranded side, my default move is there's no place like home, which is a progression track for being able to return home. Um, and once I unlock that, I'm allowed to go home with or without my companions and come back uh, at will. And cool. once that happens, we create that world. And now that's a new place we can go to. And for the additional move, I chose alien technology. Uh, so I can uh, hook together my future tech with the 1984 technology of this world mm -hmm. and create all new tech. Nice. Basically. Magic alien 1984 tech. Uh-huh. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A lot of good stuff going on here. Very cool. 
All right. Uh, so the next step that we have is our backstories. And uh, we took a little bit of time to go over uh, this uh, by ourselves because uh, this is our, our own character's backstory. And uh, the really fun part is when we combine the backstories together, we, we each have probably added little tidbits of world building to each of our characters. And now these are more true things that we're adding into our world, which is really cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see what everybody like put in there. So that's going to mess with our, our pence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia, do you want to start? Um, yeah. Sure. I have. I do have one that I'm like not totally sure about. Um, okay. And then one that I haven't answered at all yet because I wasn't quite clear on the question. So, okay. Uh, my first question is, what does your immortal lineage mean to you? And so I put down that at first it probably seemed really unfair to be only half a god because that sounds like a real bummer. Um, but now I think at this point it's actually extremely important to me because the the domain, domain that I picked for my parent was life and death. And how mm -hmm. can you be a god of life and death if you have never been mortal or even close to it? So it seems um, that like – having that immortal lineage com and combined with my mortal lineage is really important to me. It's really the mix of both that, that makes it happen. I like that. Uh, it's really cool because, uh, you know, we're establishing that this, this world has like literal deities and, and yeah. stuff like that with your playbook. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I love that just by picking this playbook, we're like, well, there's gods and goddesses and God, God's, can that be like the gender neutral? Is there a gender neutral word for God? I think, I think it's like ho hosts and Deities. comedians and uh, yes. gods are yes. probably all gender neutral. I have actually also heard Gaudé, which is just G-O-D-D-E. Oh, just... oh. Interesting. Oh, interesting. If you are referring... I love how but we I just think like make new probably words. A... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty, Deities. Yep. Pretty straightforward, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. We need more gender neutral words I'm also fairly certain that things. just like... Gender gender neutral non binary is synonymous with deity anyways, so it's fine. Right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you kind of said the same word twice, actually. So. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my second question was one that I just like wasn't totally mm -hmm. clear on. Um, who is a true demigod in your eyes? Does that mean like what do I think it means to be a true demigod? Or like, hey, that person is a, is a real like what a great example of a demigod. That, that's like, the oh Percy that's Jackson, the thing, right? that's the one. Like what? right, that that's it. It's it's up to interpretation. Okay, uh, is this like your character's personal? Like if I met a person that was like this, they would be pretty much the equivalent of a demigod. Or is it like um, my my grade school teacher uh, who taught me everything about this subject that I'm really into uh, and has always given whatever, whatever, uh, they're kind of like a demigod in my eyes type okay. of deal. I don't have an answer for this one yet. Maybe okay. I'll think of that's, one. I don't that's know. That's okay. We can it's, swing back around to it, too, in context of everybody else later, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a, a big question. I guess all yeah. of these are big questions. <laughs> um, what do you hope to be able to say to your immortal parent one day? Um, I went and looked back at, like, the stats that I picked, and um, I picked – really like a lot of logical and energetic. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that I would want to come back and be like, I figured it out. I have the perfect system for how <laughs> life and death works. <laughs> if you just do the math <laughs> and like, I totally understand it. I have learned everything that there is to learn. I know what's up and I have come up with a plan. Whether or not they want or need a plan is <laughs> that's, totally that's up not to my question. GM. Yep. But I am here to give them the plan. Here's what I, we're I gonna love do. the energy of uh, PowerPoint and Binder combined presentation to your parents. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. That is totally how this is. Gonna, like, there's going to be graphics. There's going to be cool wipes. There's going to mm -hmm. be... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a laser light show. I don't know. With, with but 1984 I have tech. figured out the true meaning of life and death and how to implement our power. I'm sure they had holograms back then. 
back when? <laughs> 1984 <laughs> holograms? They are, they are always. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's the whole point of immortality, <laughs> Ryan. Back when? That's fine. <laughs> Do deities still use car phones? <laughs> Do they need to? <laughs> they just tap into the ley lines I mean, directly. Well, why not? That's the question. When was PowerPoint invented? They really don't even have PowerPoint, isn't it? Like 1984 or something? Well, yeah. we could have magic PowerPoint for the magic people of the world. We can have those big like cards, though, you know, on yeah. an easel. Oh, like, it's, hi- it's a hyperdeck. Yeah, yeah. It's a hyperdeck. <laughs> you, have to, you have to etch your PowerPoint into film and then show it on a film <gasps> reel. No, it is one of those overhead projectors like mm. they use in a classroom. Oh, you have yes, to do it yes. on transparencies. Yes. You have yes. a transparency. Oh, yes. goodness. Oh, with the color. You could do color transparencies and be like super fancy. Yeah. And also the with like dry erase or wet erase markers on there so that you can do the markings as you talk about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very fancy. Yeah, top yeah. of the line. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Good. Um and what about Great. your uh leader side? If you, if you if you notice for the audience at home, um there's five backstory questions that we had to answer for our playbooks as a whole. Um and your primary playbook has an extra question compared to your secondary cuz your your primary backstory is more important to your character as a whole. Uh, so we've got three uh, primary questions to answer and two secondary questions. So uh, you've got the secondary of the leader. Yes. Um, and two questions for that as well. Um, so my first question is, how do you deal with the responsibilities of being a leader publicly? And I said, uh, I try to act really humble about it, saying it's an honor and a responsibility. But honestly, I'm part God and there's you know, really no way that they weren't going to put me in charge. So I pretty much love every minute of it. <laughs> uh-huh. Cool. Like, I kind of deserve to be in charge. So... <laughs> um, And then who is your role model outside the team and what can't they teach you? Uh, I said, I think I want to be some other god. We can maybe as a group, I thought, kind of define who this other god is because (laughs) I I want you all to maybe have like a little bit of world building power with that part. Mm. Um, But they can help me to understand um, my powers and, you know, like that context of, you know, being a deity. But um, they know nothing about fitting in with people or... How any of that works? I love um, that. <laughs> can I can I posit uh, the 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 god or goddess of gravity? Gravity. Ooh. Um, because gravity is all weird at the junction points. Ooh. Um, and I just see that as this this deity like just totally messing with the populations of these worlds <laughs> just because they can. Well, and we determined that like that made travel between pence kind of like difficult Tricky. or particular yeah. or something. So I imagine that like a deity of gravity would actually be really important in a world like this. Yeah. yeah. But cool. like but like not having the scope of being able to to uh you know deal with the normal people right they're like this is the way i wanted the world to to work for the gravity Mm -hmm. they're just gonna have to deal with it (laughs) right and if you just do the math it all makes sense i don't understand why these people are having such a difficult time Mm -hmm. yeah obviously physics duh Get I invented it. it. It's obviously so easy. <laughs> so straightforward. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I've got. Awesome. Just you a know, real treat. Just a real peach of a character. <laughs> boundary mathematics has to be a nightmare oh, man. class in this world. It's like oh, discrete yeah. math. <laughs> only, only worse. And probably. you can like have a whole like career as a boundaryitician. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I'm just like the if you imagine I mean, why do you not look so excited about this? <laughs> oh no, I, I am pretty excited. I'm also just rubbing oh. uh my, my some uh I need to get find some eye drops after this recording. <laughs> I'll be fine. Well. Is, I was like, are you like oh no, no this is too much like I wondered if you were maybe no, starting no, to uh, do the gravity math in your head. <laughs> like oh, I, mean, I can see also, this out. Yes, that's, regard, that's besides the point. <laughs> I sort of imagined while the conversation was ongoing, like watching both me and immersive <laughs> expressions, like I was having the vision of, of the number of the gifts that float around on the internet where it's like the person's expression while the equations just oh, float around. Because mm-hmm. like, yes. I was having that moment lady. where I was just yep. like, huh. <laughs> How does that math work? Huh. Pretty easily, honestly. <laughs> See, exactly. 
Jesus and Christ, you're like, mm, that has numbers, though. <laughs> what if you have to use discrete no? functions for the boundaries? It's probably so that when a sign you swap between the boundaries, you go from zero to no. yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't want to. Anyways, see, here's the thing, though, is that like I tangent. The thing I love about role playing games is that Senda and I very much can be like, gravity's weird, and then leave it at that. <laughs> Just and Amma can be like, here's how it's weird. <laughs> like, let me tell you. And, like, there's room for all of that I, in games. And I, I love it, it so much yes. that, mm-hmm. like, you get to be excited about exactly the things that you want to be excited about. And, like, somebody being excited about, like, a different part of that doesn't mm-hmm. ruin it at all. You know? Gosh, games are good. Games are good. Games are great. Games good. I love your gravity god. And I'm waiting to see Amber's calculations after the show. I can't wait. Because I'm feeling like I I feel like what was really happening. I'm so excited for you to do it. Right. Well, I feel like what was really happening. I guess I have to like actually (laughs) do them now. There's there was like the math floating by my face and it was like two plus two. And then there was the math (laughs) floating by Amber's face and it was like huge whiteboards. All right, let's pull up the general relativity (laughs) equations again. (laughs) Look, it's nine point eight meters per second, but this isn't earth so i don't actually know we don't that's know true. We don't, anyway you have no like, like theory to work off of there. like what is what even is gravity anyways <laughs> anyway <laughs> like what even is gravity though what even is gravity, though? a lie you gotta Mostly. you gotta ask the the god friend of yours that's true mm-hmm. okay who wants to go next <laughs> <laughs> i think we're on i think we're on send us right now yeah i was just skimming down the same order that's why i made you go yeah. first yeah the um, mask gotcha. and the hopeful yeah so, um, yes, I'm the mask and the hopeful. So we'll start with the mask background questions first, of which, as Ryan mentioned, there are three. Um, so the first one is, what in your normal life lets you be close to the team? Um, and I think that it's because I'm living on my own at 19 um, and no one's keeping track of me or I spend my time or anything. So um, nobody is like keeping you from doing anything. I think I live close to campus because I sort of thought maybe... We're like in college or all related to a college mm-hmm. in some way because that's a very magical girl trope would be that we were mm-hmm. going to school together. I kind of love um, that. We never, we never actually defined that. No, uh, that but I would totally watch a TV show of Demigod Goes to College. Right. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if we want to, if we want to lock in that we're all college students, I, mean, um, I, I think that would be f- amazing. I'm good with that. Let's if everybody's good with that, yeah. Um, just wait until you get to my background, oh boy. Uh, because that's going to make things very interesting. <laughs> oh no! How delightful! <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, cool. So basically, I live off campus, but like close to campus, but like off mm. campus where like nobody's paying attention to me. Mm, there's no RAs off campus. There's no RAs yeah. off campus, so I can just do whatever I want to do. So I can like be like closer in or out or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. So uh, my second question is, what does the mask mean to you? Um, and I think that for me, it started out as like a duty or a calling that had to be fulfilled because like the pent and the world have to be protected and somebody has to do that. Um, but I think that I've come to understand, and this is, I'm excited for our relationship questions later, just to be clear, because I've set myself up for some things that don't have resolutions mm. yet that I'm hoping to resolve in relationship questions. So just <laughs> leaving that aside. Oh, this just is character know. creation cast. We don't resolve anything. <laughs> well, okay. We'll not, be, not resolve, but connect yeah. and make it worse, please. We'll um, mm-hmm. I would like the stakes to go higher. Um, yes, oh, yes, please. Yeah, that's, that's all right. <laughs> Um, Cool. So now I have more of an understanding that the mask actually means something more like love, devotion and sacrifice. And my personal life actually has to take a second priority to the mask itself. Mm. That's my feelings about it. Um, I like it. Yeah. So that's the mask. My third question is, um, what keeps you here? Um, To which I answered love. Um, if it were only me, I would probably try to actually return to the farm pent, but I don't feel like I can leave someone here <laughs> to fight by themselves. I don't know who it is yet, but that's what I want to find out <laughs> when we talk that's about fair. relationships. That's juicy. Um, so, <laughs> so that'll be there. Add a little spice. Um, yeah. Cool. And then I have two hopeful questions, right? And so that's what these two are. 
Um, the first one is, how did you get your abilities? I had a funny moment where I thought to myself, I've already answered this. It was a tanning bed accident. And then I went, that's a different supers game that you are playing, Senda. <laughs> Wrong game. <laughs> um, so. But a very cool backstory. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm like glowing and charged by the sun. It's fantastic. Oh. But like I said, different game. <laughs> different game. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So, um, I think... What happened? This one was more of a story for me, so bear with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I think what happened was um, I was minding my own business, walking down the street or whatever, and suddenly um, I came upon a fight between someone wearing a mask and uh, the forces of shadow, whatever those are, like mm -hmm. evil in our world that we are fighting. Um, and there was like an instance where that person's eyes met mine and they went, you know, they had that realization where they went innocent bystander. Oh, no. Um, and then like the evil thing attacked me and they like jumped in front of me and like in blocking that stroke, I saw their mask fall to the ground and I bent down and I picked it up to give it back to them. And when I looked up, they and the shadowy thingy were both gone. And then I looked down in my hand and the mask that I had picked up to give back to them was melting into my hand and being absorbed Ooh. by me. So I think that's how I got my powers. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's very good. Yeah. That was, it's uh, masks all the way down. Masks yeah. all the way down. Um, <laughs> but it's also kind of superhero-y now, right? It is. Um, <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, so that was my second question. Um, and then my, or, or my first of the supers questions. And then my second supers question is who helped you get a handle on these abilities? Um, and I said my grandfather. Um, so he still lives in the farming pent. Um, but you know, long distance calling is a thing. Um, even if you pay extra. So expensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but so we actually still talk quite a bit. Um, and um, the funny thing about how our conversations work um, is I don't actually know if he understands that I'm telling him things like literal things, like a mask was absorbed by my hand, or if he thinks I'm speaking in metaphor because he always responds as if I'm talking about plants. But somehow oh. his advice is always right anyway. So like he always tells me a thing about plants, which ends up metaphorically being true about my powers and I like learn how to interpret it. I as, love like, that. <laughs> I love that so much. I love that so much. <laughs> so yeah, my grandfather is a oh, that's lovely. cool guy with plants. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. <laughs> oh, I forgot oh. about no, our that's, name. That's <laughs> your name. Yeah, no, no I'm, you're Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon oh, no, and I'm Michelle Lindsay, Danielle. I thought, or Danielle like, Michelle? I thought it was Michelle something. You're, you're right. I got a Yeah, you're Danielle Michelle. I'm uh, Amelia. Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm a character, out. Lindsay Lindsay Shannon. Lindsay, Lindsay Shannon. Uh -huh. It's very cool. But, but you have to spell it right. The first one has an E. And the second mm -hmm. one has an A. And you get so <laughs> mad when people do it wrong. It's really frustrating. It's very it's, simple. <laughs> look, it's in my, I was about to say email signature, but um, got to back up to 1984 here. Uh, um, it is. Uh, uh, they had in email the, in 84, but it was on uh, my the business bulletin card. board. Like on your forum. Yeah. Uh, the, what is it called? Wait, she's all got stickers on backpacks, thing. right? Yeah. Name stickers on Name backpacks. Stickers on backpacks. Yeah. I sewn uh, into also, my underwear. <laughs> I, I got to say, when you said Lindsay with an E, my brain immediately went, ah, D-S-A-E. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Lindsay. So, like, you do that, you say with an E, and people go, Lindsay? L Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> There's so many spots to put it in the E. You could put it anywhere. It could be Linz Lindsay with the E at the after the Y. S it could be S E A L I N D S E A. Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Anyways. laughs> moving right along. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, Emma, <laughs> would you like to tell oh, us about yeah, your character? Me. Hello. So, Nisp, as has been established before, is from the Ocean Pent. Uh, and the first question for the gadgeteer is, where did you learn to create gadgets? I think he was born to a uh, family on in the Ocean Pent who handled salvaging, um, gathering either from shipwrecks when things go wrong or from just 
old technology that before we had like more reliable technology and getting them to help clean up the ocean and repurpose it and the like. Uh, and so a lot of the salvage that was deemed too unvaluable or too unusable, she started tinkering around with. And that's where she first learned to make gadgets by working with that and being surrounded by people who were very whose entire like jobs were built around identifying and utilizing mm. junk and materials. Uh, I'm going to actually hop over into the weapon because I'm going to jump back and forth between my backstory. Oh, okay. oh, you think Fancy. that you're so special because you're the designer of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what forced you to learn to fight? Um, I think during a salvage mission, something went wrong and I got captured by a villain because one of our tropes is that the villains have secret lairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I ended up in a villain lair. Uh, and so I had to learn to fight there while I was captured. Um... What gadget is more than its function? The only thing I was able to keep when I was captured there was a uh, single object we had for... It's basically a fancy metal detector, and it's like very compact despite it being a 1984 metal detector that we use to help like find old salvage and old gear. Uh, and so while it is you know, practical as a metal detector and I use it to find things and identify when there's more material than there should be in a place... It's also just one of the few things I have from before when I got captured. Mm -hmm. And so that is what gadget is more than its function. And then you had a mentor once. Why must you go beyond them? I think the mentor was another prisoner at the villain lair. Mm. Um, They're someone who helped teach me so that I could survive while I was there. Uh, but they didn't make it out. And oh, that's no. why I must go beyond them. Um, I think... Did, did, they, did they not make it out as in still there or... They ambiguous. didn't make it out. You don't, you don't know they their fate. They didn't make it out. Yeah. Okay. I lost them in the escape. That, that sounds like... I assume uh, they're dead. The building collapsed ooh. around them. An explosion happened. They're definitely dead. 100% Certainly. dead. No one, no one dies and comes back in superheroes or magical girls. <laughs> that just never happens. They, there was no way they could have possibly survived that. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. Uh-huh. And yet somehow in season four. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Finally, who was the first person besides yourself you created the gadget for? Uh, there was another prisoner as well who is now my best friend who I created something to help her escape. Uh, and so he's the first person I created something for other than myself. Nice. Yeah. Very good. And she came with me to the city pent where we now both reside. There you go. All right. Uh, buckle up. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's do it. My character is a literal ghost. Um, from another planet. Cool. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. So, uh, I'm, I'm the spirit and the stranded. So the spirit magical girl, uh, and the stranded, right? Um, so my first spirit question is to find some of your spiritual practices. Uh, what do they mean to you? Um, I try to commune with other spirits uh, in this world to learn more about the history of the world. Um, I'm not even sure if this is the world I'm supposed to be on or not. Uh, The shape feels weird. Uh, So I have practices to kind of center myself. Um, And a lot of my practices are kind of instinctual and involve triangles uh, in some way, shape or form. Uh, but I can't remember why. So that's that. Um, what ritual holds the most personal significance? Uh, every day I try to commune uh, with the others, uh, but I haven't heard word from um, anybody else uh, from where I'm from at all. Uh, the other spirits here are different, um, but the more I learn from them, the closer I feel I'll be getting to finding my my own uh, people. Who are you without your spiritual practices? Um, I feel like I would be lost in the in-between, um, lonely. It, it might be because of my practices that I'm able, even able to have friendships now uh, in the real world. Um, let's see. And over on the stranded side, I've got what is your defining memory of your home world? Um, probably what I can only perceive of as my own death. Um, There was an accident of sorts in a lab where I was working. Um, The details are hazy, but it feels like the device I was testing malfunctioned and potentially exploded. Um, 
And that was uh, basically the last thing I remember before coming in existence here. Why is this your only home now? It took me a while. I'm not sure what a while is in here. It could be months. It could be centuries. Um, when I first got here, uh, I wasn't able to eat or interact with others. Um, I, I kind of feel like um, Dr. Manhattan after his accident in Watchmen, where he took forever to try to reassemble himself, mm. so to speak. So this is kind of like me taking a long time to try to figure out how to manifest myself into this world. Um, it took a lot of focus uh, to make myself known to a few, um, and I can't figure out a way back home right now, uh, but at least I have friends here uh, that make me question whether I am truly dead or not. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so, and I also changed one of my abilities because of this. Um, I had selected future technology before, um, but I wanted to swap that up with impossible mo mobility um, because I want to be able to like, I've got Cyanex and weird magic. Mm -hmm. So I figure like I can picture my character like kind of floating along and then the stuff that uh, she carries is just kind of floating next to her as she's walking. Uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my character. Ox. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Whew. That's, that's nice. all the backstories. What do we, what that's do, all the backstories. What do we do now? Uh, now we get to, uh, dine, yeah, relationships. <laughs> the part you've been waiting for. <laughs> so each, uh, each archetype comes with two relationship questions. So a total of four between them, uh, when the two archetypes are smushed together. Um, and, I, I usually say, you know, one person per question or so, and then uh, you can answer as many as you want. I'd say since there's three other players here, we answer three questions. If you want to answer the fourth, that's perfectly okay, too. Yeah. Uh, another, another approach I generally suggest sometimes is uh, two from the primary, one from the secondary. Mm -hmm. Yep. So th there's all sorts of different ways you can do this. I... Yep. I think one of them from the primary didn't make sense to me so i went with yeah one from primary and two from secondary uh potentially how dare you i know <laughs> the, oh so the, you the can whole, break the rules but ryan can't yeah the whole first part of this episode <laughs> you can do anything you want in this game it's your game you can bend the rules if you want it's okay yeah the whole but second no, episode, once, once ryan dare. does it how dare. Yeah, how dare. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have to Okay, because if rules. the designer of the game starts bending the rules, then why did you even bother to make a game? I mean, that's fair. Rules uh, are fake. <laughs> <laughs> rules are fake. It's fine. Hmm. Gosh, RPGs right, are just so pretend anyway. <laughs> so can I so, just say, uh, like... How do we... Yeah, firstly, how do we want to do this? Secondly, I'm, like, super torn because I want the answers to these questions to be the same person, but I don't think they should be, and it's super interesting that they aren't. Tell I us mean, what you were going to tell us. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, uh, I was trying to figure out how we wanted to uh, figure out these relationships uh, with the other characters. Um, if, if there's any ideas, obviously their consent is important here. Uh, if a relationship that is being suggested uh, doesn't vibe with the other player, um, then we can we can X that and, and switch it up if we need to or what have you. Uh, so. OK, well, I have one for my first question already. OK. Who has seen a side of your divine parent that even you haven't? Mm. Uh, Ryan, if you're dead. <laughs> Oh, it's this is a super interesting dynamic. Point, Mark, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. You know? Be yeah. I mean, it has to be. Like, that's the only. <laughs> that makes so much sense. Oh, I mean, I feel like that fits perfectly. Yeah. Uh, the the demigod of life and death over there um, and me being a literal ghost. Uh, wow. <laughs> you probably have a closer relationship with my parent than I do. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> 
Ouch. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so Why actually, don't you that... bring your friend over for dinner? Because you like my friend better than you like me. <laughs> <laughs> you like the conversation. You go, hey, why don't you bring my, my child over for dinner tonight? Right. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Why don't you tell Danielle Michelle to come clean her room once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> Danielle Michelle. <laughs> Do we just, I forgot we did okay. that. I forgot we did that. I got really serious with the backstory for getting I know. And now I'm like reconciling in my brain Lin- Lindsay, Lindsay, Shannon with like mm-hmm. this person. I feel like has, I'm like, even more okay with it now though. Like because I like for me, it's it's like what a terrible name. Like, oh, because I'm not like totally human. I'm like, these are popular human names. Like, <laughs> you know? But like I feel like it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what's on your uh, college uh, ID badge, right? Danielle Michelle. Lindsay, uh, yeah, Danielle <laughs> Michelle. Uh-huh. And maybe All you right. send over just like I'm going to pick an alias when I move to right. the city pen or something, or and I'm just going to pick like I want to sound like really popular because I don't want people to know that I'm like from a farm. <laughs> I think actually it may be the opposite. We're like that is the name that my parents that's your gave farm me, name? and I hate it. And so I'm like, I, I think may, I was actually just thinking maybe I go by like LL or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Oh, but see, it's LLS. So maybe you just go by Liz. Right, right. Or Liz. Liz. I like LL or something like that. Right. Like, I think I use nicknames. <laughs> right. Or yeah. or L's. L's, L's. L's kind of sounds cool. I like L's, L's is fun. Mm-hmm. L's, L's is solid. Good. I'm going to go with L's, but it is definitely Lindsay, Lindsay, Shannon. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. But only my mother calls me that when I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, Shannon. You get in here right now. <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. Anyway, good. Back okay. to relationships. Yes, anyway, uh, Ryan, it's you. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um, okay. Goodness gracious. This is uh, this is an interesting because uh, I, I totally spaced on the whole like you're the deity of a parent that is life and death literal. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say then because like part of me was like, who is related to the uh, to the spirit you have the strongest bond with? Could be really interesting for. Um, our, our demigod over there. Um, Sorry, what is especially the question? If, uh, who, who is related to the spirit you have the strongest bond with? Oh, interesting. Because um, I can commune with spirits, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I, I want to uh, say that it's uh, Danielle Michelle because it'd be really cool if it was a god. Mm-hmm. The spirit of a god. Yeah. That had died at some point. Mm-hmm which just hurts my brain. Um, But, you know, that just adds tension that gods can die. Mm -hmm. But we don't know why. Or was killed, you know. Or was killed, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well. What kind of god was it? That's a good question. Or do you Um, not know? Maybe I don't know. Uh, I I wonder if even that that spirit that I uh, know, uh, that I have the strongest bond with, um even knows hear me out god of immortality whoa Ooh. the one dead god we know wow. of Ooh. the god of immortality wow that hurts my <laughs> okay i like it which which would make sense that i would want to try to have a strong bond with that spirit because that might be my ticket to coming back mm-hmm. yeah oh and okay. also, like, what kind of weird politics are there between the god of immortality and the god of life and death? <laughs> They're probably, like, siblings that hate each other. Oh, I bet they were yeah. twins. Oh. oh. Probably they were twins. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <gasps> no. Oh, no. Their twin killed them. Well, I, w- I was going to say it was a bet. The god of life and death bet the god of immortality. <laughs> I bet it can't kill you. <laughs> that does sound like something siblings would do. It also sounds like a pretty typical god myth kind of thing for pantheons. Right. Uh-huh. Like that kind of nonsense is. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So they were definitely I, I, twins. I um, like the implications of like 
people on this world are not immortal because the god of immortality was killed by the god of life and death. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hear what Danielle Michelle has to say. <laughs> uh, Lindsay, Lindsay our, uh, 1994 technology. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> I like right. that we have some like really heavy, serious, like philosophical questions, but also can you skateboard <laughs> on the borders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of the pets. Oh, yeah. I mean. I'll get back to you on the physics about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> cool. Oh, very good. Very good. Oh, I love it. Uh, okay, perfect. Shall I just jump in here with a question yeah. and mm-hmm. keep us uh, moving along? Be like a host and like keep us yeah. on track. <laughs> look at that. What's that like? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I'm going to remind me of your character's name. Nisp, aka uh, torpedo. Right, torpedo. Torpedo. Yes. Um. Wow. <laughs> I forgot that too. I forgot everybody's names. I feel <laughs> like I should. Well, I definitely have... forgot Ryan's because it was absurd. It was absurd because it's alien. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna. Try. Okay. <laughs> but you can call them ox, like auxiliary. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. Um. So I have a really interesting thing in which um. I think what I want to do is answer my hopeful, my super secondary playbook question first, um, which is who reminds you of who you could have been without your powers? And if it's okay with you, Omer, I think that that is going to be Torpedo, like because you do so many gadgety things that are actually like Mm -hmm. physical manipulations of stuff instead of just like... Mm -hmm. I'm power. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That also creates a fun dynamic because like one of us is a demigod. One is a spirit. You and I are the only two who are ones. like, <laughs> we're normal ones. But then you got like your accent. I mean, I don't know it because you, I don't know if you mastered right. right identity, but like yeah. well, I, in, in super power mode, like we, we bond the, we bond over the fact that like, yeah, we're both just the normal yeah, ones. Yeah, we're like, you know, <laughs> actual mortal peoples but yeah i think there's definitely a a weird element then where like because people don't necessarily know that l's is the mask that like when i Mm -hmm. am presenting as l's that i'm like still looking at you in the same way that i'm like oh right the Mm -hmm. person who makes me feel like a normal person and (laughs) but like (laughs) but then there's a weird dynamic (laughs) yeah i also feel like it's interesting choice because while well that's probably the best choice in the group (laughs) this has also gone through a lot I know (laughs) normal is a very relative relative in and in this crew (laughs) if we've learned anything (laughs) I like we're just having like a a regular conversation with like L's and Nisp like outside the like outside the team and you're just like hey like venting about something and I'm like do you want me to blow them up I can I can I can set like six different gadgets to deal with that problem like one afternoon no no oh okay then then are we just venting this for the sake of okay sure see so for no some gadgets. reason, I cancel the bomb board. For some reason, that reminds me what it's like to be a normal person. If I hadn't touched the mask, right? For some reason, there's something about the way that works yep. that just doesn't. You're just work. having that conversation, and then yeah. suddenly, Ox just floats behind you with like a bundle of books floating <laughs> behind her. <laughs> I think there's also like a very deadpan. Like this delivers it so deadpan that it's it, while it is very possible she's being serious there's a very high chance they're being like satirical like you can't tell because she's so oh, deadpan no. you can't tell <laughs> like, I can I can blow them up if you want oh okay we're just fine. that's cool. what every conversation with my brother is like my brother's one of those people that like I'm like are you being sarcastic or no because I can't totally tell and like one would be okay and one would really not mm-hmm. <laughs> cool 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 all right Amr what do you got yeah, it looks like a relationship. Um, I think who pushes you to be more than your skill set? And I want to, from the weapon, and I want to say Danielle Michelle, our demigod, because I think I see what, from what I'm gathering from, from Danielle Michelle, you're a little bit in your head about being half god, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, and I think I see like, I could, like, if I just let myself be my full skill set and nothing else, I could be like Danielle Michelle. 
and I don't want to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Wow. Someone needs to like absolutely like my my full view of her is that like she absolutely one hundred percent needs to be taken down a peg. Like you know. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I'm trained to be one of like the best fighters possible. I could take pretty much anyone on in a fist fight. And I could probably take some gods on in a fist fight. And then I see Daniel Machado, I'm like, but I don't want to be like that. Maybe I should find a personality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she, I think very much is one of those people. I was like, do you know who my dad is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this just that's Pam. Yeah, I've sent oh, many people it. to your dad. <laughs> Oh, so good. All right. Um, Is it right. me yeah, again? You, you, I think so. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I got to think about this. I don't know. Does somebody else have one that they know for sure they want to do? I don't. These are hard. So, yeah, it's fine to it's fine to think. Yeah, I actually think that I know how I'm going to sort out my last two, but it's really interesting because I'm basically picking them up and it's like a toss up. Okay. But I'm willing to make a decision. <laughs> or we can I've certainly got, talk it out too. I've got a couple possibilities uh for the last two that I was thinking of. I'm gonna do the thing where I'm just gonna jump in and Go make audio it. happen. So do it. Um we'll just <laughs> instead of all of us agreeing that we have ideas, mm-hmm. yeah. I will selfishly take the mics. Um do it. I so I have two questions left, and they're both of my mass questions. And I if it's okay, I think I'm just gonna talk about them both at the same time because to me they're mm-hmm. they're like related because this was the really interesting thing where I was like, oh this is gonna be two separate people. Oh my <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to be but I but think it's really interesting. Yes. It's far more All interesting right. to be related to more people. Um, I agree. For mm-hmm. me, always. So, like, while they I, could very easily be the same person, and that would be um, the easy way out. <laughs> That's not mm-hmm. how we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my last two. Yeah, one of my goals with the relationships was to, like, create contrasting dynamics with each relationship, which is, is fun. interesting. Oh. Right. So my last two questions, which are the mass questions, are who are you tasked with protecting and who makes you wish that you could reveal your identity to them? And the really interesting thing about separating those two things out to me is that I was, like, trying to figure out where, like, I I have a potential love dynamic on the table here, if everybody is Mm -hmm. comfortable with it, right? Okay, because I also have a question that says, who is your blind spot? (laughs) Oh, interesting. Well, so... I'm intrigued to see where this goes, because I also have to possibly... Let me propose what I mm-hmm. am considering, mm-hmm. and um, and then you can tell me between <laughs> Ryan and Amelia <laughs> how what makes the most sense in terms of splitting this up. So what I was considering is who I'm tasked with protecting. I was going to go with Ox because I don't think that a demigod probably needs my protection, but Ox might because she's not from here. She's mm-hmm. not she from, around from around here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So there could be something weird about um, how she interacts with like the world um, that. And I think that, you know, enough of like what it's like to not totally belong to a place, like not the same way that she does, but like, you know, mm-hmm. what I mean? right. in, a, in a different, more mortal coil kind of way. Yes. Right. Um, so I think that it might work both socially in from that mm-hmm. aspect and then if we um if we link in some of our villainous stuff into a non-corporeal sense and maybe she attracts bad guys because they're walking the same plane or whatever like that Ooh. um then there might be something there that i can latch onto in terms of like it is the mask's job to protect the pent slash world from you know some of these particular villains um Ooh. so that was my thought with that which means that amelia i wish that i could reveal my identity to you (laughs) which means i think i might be in love with you is that okay (laughs) Uh, that would totally be okay because i would love for you to be my blind spot awesome um i think that works really well like i mean honestly if you just want to straight up be my girlfriend that would be great we can go on a date i have no problem asking you i'm a god why would you not want to go out with me (laughs) um (laughs) i I only have one question for Lindsay. (laughs) What is your taste in people? <laughs> if oh, this is your gosh. friend, oh, and that because, like, like, your what are you doing? Your friend constantly yeah. offers to blow things up for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your best friend constantly offers to blow things up. 
you have a demigod who needs to be taken down a bunch it's of pegs. It's just a crush. It's just a really big That's crush. True. You know, I just like to show up and make sure that she feels encouraged when I throw my wheat stalks. <laughs> I forgot that you had wheat yeah, stalks. I really forgot about the wheat stalks. <laughs> what oh, a terrible course. team of garbage people. I love them so I just, much. You know, it's how I expect my feelings is by showing up on top of a lamppost and tossing a wheat stock and then I'm helping <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting for the episode where you reveal your identity by tossing a wheat stock down on the table <laughs> as in your normal form <laughs> it's you know but that's in like season two so you yeah know. exactly <gasps> no what if <laughs> what if I'm like in love with the mask and not Lindsay, though. Oh my gosh, Ooh. yes. Oh, please, yes. Because, like, why would I oh, be in love with Lindsay? Please, please, <laughs> please, yes. Like, the mask is my blind spot. So, like, oh, when we're fighting, yes. like, if the mask oh is captured, God. I'm like, oh, crap, we have to go do this. Oh, but, like, jeez. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's Lindsay's just best. another college student. Right. I mean, she is. She's just like whatever. She's just like this girl who like likes some around. farm girl. Like mm-hmm. who cares? <laughs> <laughs> she just happens to be around. A that's lot. my friend, and I will blow up the base that they're in, and then everyone who kidnapped them, and then everyone who didn't help right. him rescue them. I just, I just hang As around because do. no, I didn't say it right. Say your, say your not torpedo name again. Nisp. 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 I was reversing the F yep. and S. Nisf. I'm just here because Nisf is here. Yeah. <laughs> God, I love this so much. Oh, it's so good. Oh, delightful. Okay. 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 Well, anyway, so I just cleared out both of mine. <laughs> there you go. In hey. one go. Um, so everybody else has theirs left, yeah? I still have one left. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got a couple. Um, so I, I can just drop mine. Uh, that'd be fine. Sure. Um, okay. So... Who still confuses you, despite all you've learned about this world? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's some options. Um, I, I think uh, Nisf, um, because why all the weapons? <laughs> <laughs> it's practical. I, I don't. Yeah. Okay. But why? <laughs> Nisf moderates himself so I don't become a ghost. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, and then the other one I was thinking of, uh, who holds the spirit of your home world in their soul? Um, and I was thinking uh, elves for that one, um, uh, especially because of the, the hopeful side. Mm-hmm. But I think with the, the mask stuff yes. you've been talking about. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I want to say that like that mask literally melded with your soul somehow uh-huh. and the spirit of my world is connected to whatever this mask thing is yeah if mm. it, it may be the mask also originated on your world and that's why it's powerful in our world in a superman yeah. kind of way um and Ooh. uh and so yeah like the mask is is maybe a direct actual artifact yeah from where you're from Ooh. I like it. I like it, dude. Maybe that's why I have to protect you. Oh, we're linked. We're linked. Inextricably. <sighs> I that's love it. fun. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Except my... Danielle, Danielle, Michelle. No, wait, you only have one Danielle. <laughs> no, yeah, Danielle, Michelle. I mean, I need a third name. Um, I have one last question that I, I want to answer, which is who helps you feel more mortal than anyone else? It's obviously Nisf, Um, because the one person that, like, does not put up with my garbage, Um, that is just, like, not interested in anything that I have to say. (laughs) And I've never had that before. Like, I don't understand why you don't think I'm cool. (laughs) I mean, I think you could be cool. (laughs) No, no, I am cool. (laughs) No, you could be. To be cool, you have to actually be cool. Yeah, what do you think I've been doing this whole time? <laughs> My life is nothing but How being much cool. You have? What, so what is it that I would have to do? I don't understand. Like, <laughs> Pay attention to other cool people. Oh, okay. People I will do that as soon as I there. see one. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. My point. <laughs> and I only see one when I'm fighting bad guys. Ah, that, you mask, ask, ah? that masked individual. I have seen one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I want to play this game. I know I keep saying this like every time. I want this. I want this so bad. Oh gosh. Oh, I love it. All right. God. All right, Amir. Sir, is yeah, Amir. Yeah, I've got to pick two more. Um. Hmm. Interesting choices. I'm going to go. Who inspires you to make new gadgets? Is going to be for Ox. Yes. I think the combination of Ox being dead from another world and just like being the person whom traditional gadgets help the least to him. <laughs> like, I'm just like, nothing in this world is useful for, for Ox. Maybe I could make something that a ghost could use. Very interesting. I have the move uh, Alien Technology. So mm-hmm. I, I can utilize alien tech and fuse it with the tech of this world. So. Right. The that, tech of this world is alien to you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm just like, but can I make it work without having the fusion be a po- oh. part of true? Like, How does this work if you don't have a corporeal form? <laughs> yes. Uh, and also just like, I kind of feel bad. Like, they deserve some gifts. You know? <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Ox could use some gifts. True. And then... That's, wait, that's, that's still not what I wrote. Who, who, <laughs> uh, who do you always lose against in a sparring match? If that's cool, I think I think it, it's got to be our our mask, our L's. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> our wheat the wave. Wheat wave. <laughs> the wheat wave. The wheat wave. Is that what you come out? I was like, wait, wait. It was like the white whale. I know it's not the white whale. I was like, oh yeah, the wheat whale. No, wait, not a whale. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. The I just wheat thought wave. it was a really big pun. <laughs> no, mm. It was much better in your head than it was when I actually wrote it. See, I thought it was like a pun on like the fact that like, the mask is just like always out of reach, like right. the white whale is, because like how to see the mask cool. is always like, yeah, that that's what cool I you know? too. No, I was yeah, nowhere cool. near as deep as that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good, good, good. Uh, anyway, yes, yeah, sparring. Uh, mm. I like the idea that you are the one, because like, Going on to think that you're also like the lowest power person here, af- like uh, after <laughs> yeah, me, basically. right? Like, and yet you're the only one who I lose to in sparring matches. Demigod, nothing. Ghost from another dimension, nothing. Although this person with a mask and wheat sticks, uh, why am I losing? To be fair, um, I mean, uh, Els does have impossible movement, energy manipulation, and reality man- manipulation without the mask. Oh yeah. So like, yeah, I mean, Elle, is it? Is it? <laughs> Well, that that begs the question: Are your abilities like? Um, do you accidentally use them, like when you're not in mask form? Oh, interesting. Um, like yeah, you're I think sparring maybe, and you're like maybe, accidentally re- reality manipulating and right because I'm moving trying impossibly. to stay undercover, but sometimes I slip up and like do the thing automatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but like it still looks like I'm mostly normal. Yeah. It's like it's like very subtle, yeah, to the point where it looks like yeah, a person that's super trained could do this. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's probably the reality manipulation that's getting you. <laughs> you know, as you do. Potentially I'm just the realizing movement. that, like, I think I need to change my look too because I had picked angsty and arduous along with assured and aspiring. I feel like I need either sculpted and sassy or immaculate and iridescent. <laughs> yeah, I agree with I mean, you. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to go with immaculate, immaculate and iridescent. I oh, think, I love yes. it. You're making yeah. me look back at mine. I'm de- uh, definitely still on board with mysterious and magnetic and bright and beaming, actually. I'm mm-hmm. still good with that. Yeah, my, mine fits ethereal and evocative and alien and, and ambiguous. Yeah. As well. I didn't come up with an alias either. What's a good name for a uh, jerk face demigod? <laughs> jerk face. <laughs> <mixed Yeah. laughs> Jerky well, jerk face. Um, you're the demigod um, of life and death, right? Right. Hmm. Um, I mean, but you're also iridescent. Um, so I I am I am I would be tempted to recommend the adjective brilliant or something, like the brilliant something in a oh, gleam sort of way. Okay. 
Nope. It's just her brilliance. Her brilliance. There you go. Her brilliance. Her brilliance. <laughs> I feel like that nails it. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I hate her. Why do I have She's such a crush awful. on you? I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there's the, there's that, Ryan's that story there. We'll figure it out. Thank you for letting me <laughs> create like... my true form. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Nisf never calls you that. Like, Nisf like, ah, looks like her ego. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Ah. I love it. <laughs> Just, like, stuff like that. Just, like, constantly it's throwing in number one. some but snarky, really. like... <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, so I love is this it, so much. I love it so much. Is it much. public knowledge that you're a demigod? Or is this something you brag about on the regular? Or I mean, probably. <laughs> I can't awesome. imagine I don't. Like, I just mm-hmm. can't imagine having any ability to keep that quiet. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I was going to say, I'm trying to imagine this particular uh, person keeping and that. You've got a pet. <laughs> you've got a magical rat named Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo and this probably get along a lot because we've established that Lorenzo's got like a Brooklyn personality and like has no time for this. So he probably is very much on top of just like he's, making he's fun of her so brilliance as well. All the time. Lorenzo I hates me. Like, yeah. hates uh, me. like I, I feel like Lorenzo I, is like put here by my family like, to like keep an eye on me more than anything and like. Because otherwise I would have, like, a cat or something. Like, would be, like, a good, yeah. you know. But, like, no, Lorenzo. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many like, group, like, activities. Like, we go out and, like, beat a villain or something. And then it ends with me going to Lorenzo. You want to go blow stuff up somewhere else? And Lorenzo's like, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a magical pet rat that hates me. Yes. Yes. And yes. <laughs> Character creation <Ooh>. cast. <laughs> <laughs> Lorenzo would rat you out in a wow. heartbeat. Oh, no. <laughs> Too good. We don't have a pun counter for this podcast, Amory. <laughs> <laughs> Con- for, for context, as a side, uh, the Chimera Kevin played stream got a pun counter in the latest episode. I saw that. I saw uh, that. Like, like B forward. tweet about it. I got 40 puns in a two-hour wow. stream. Yeah. Or 38 puns wow. specifically. Most, of, n- n- a solid 95% of them are probably me. Probably, yeah. Probably. I didn't even watch the stream and I can tell you. Yeah, Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, All right. Do we have so, to do team questions now? Yes. Right, what's so next? now, uh, so now we've got the relationships done. Let's go to uh, the. Let's see. It is the genre tropes page. Genre world tropes. It's the second tab in the uh, spreadsheet, and we have um, both magical girl and superhero uh, selected for our genres. So we get to choose one of these two questions that kind of sets the flavor of all of our team questions, right? Um, so we get to choose one of these. Magical girls, the question is, when we first worked together as a team, we encountered pure evil and were able to push it back before it was able to consume its target. What is this evil? And what is it so intent on removing from this world? Or the other question we can choose is when we first worked together as a team, we were forced to fight someone that became uh, our group's arch nemesis. Uh, what do we know about this person? Uh, or who do we know this person as? Um, and what do they look like? What are their motivations? So we could either go superhero, tropey, or magical girl, uh, tropey. I kind of love power. having a nemesis. Like, Yeah, I was like, can, can, we, can, can we break the rule? <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, can we break the rules and answer half of the first question and half of the second question? <laughs> Interesting. I want to have a nemesis like Amelia, but I also want them to be pure evil that is intent on removing something from this world. We, we well, because we have define... to answer what its motivations are. Mm-hmm. So yeah. its okay, motivation cool. can yeah. be removing something from, from the, the world. world. Okay. So did we fight the arch nemesis? um, And who are they? What do they look like? What is their motivation? Or do we want to uh, define the pure evil for magical girls as this arch nemesis of sorts? Yeah, like there's a couple of Um, ways we could smoosh those, huh? Yeah. I'm I'm open for either. I mean, they're they're both they're both very good. Should we flip a coin? Flip a coin. Do you have a coin? I'm looking. Just roll a dice. 
Well, Even I tonight. Have one of those in I do. Ha ha ha. Okay. <laughs> Even magical yesterday. girls odd superheroes. It's a four. What did I say? Even so it's were? magical. Girls. It's magical girls. girls and evens. <laughs> um, All right. Cool. Um, so uh, we encounter pure evil. What is this evil? Um, a villain? Yeah. So I think it's our arch nemesis. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> who? Uh, do we have a uh, a name for the arch nemesis or uh, or what what type of uh, individual is this? Is this? Uh, Somebody from the shadow realm. Um, uh, I have a I have a suggestion yeah. to tie in all the pieces. Yes, please. Uh huh. They are intent upon removing the god of gravity and or the boundaries between <gasps> the gravities. They're the. They are tied to the organization that kidnapped me. The villain uh-huh. group that kidnapped me. Either. Maybe the villain that group that kidnapped me was like working for them or following them, or maybe it was like where the arch the arch villain maybe started. Maybe it was like a cult and, devoted to uh, some other yeah. anti gravity. And <laughs> they are intent on doing that because they have already done something similar to Ryan's Ooh. world. Ooh. Ooh, I love that is, very is the, much. Is the oh, I think All they're right. they're the like. Pentagon predator or something like, was like <laughs> something about the pence and another word that is alliterative and potentially has mean connotations. I don't know. Okay, I'm reaching, I'm the, reaching here. I got it. Uh, they're the spirits. They believe that if they remove the boundaries, that will turn the planet okay, into I'm a sorry. Sphere. Did you just make the opposite of flat earthers? Because <laughs> yep. our earth yeah. is somewhat flat. Yes, I did. I mean, it's three dimensional, but also somewhat flat. Spherists. Spherists. Oh, those darn spherists. Wow. Oh, Conspiracy oh, um, spherists, would you even say? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's lovely. Okay, so um so we encountered this, we were able to push it back uh before uh what was its target then? Um when we first worked together as a team. Um, what was its we, initial target? Do we think that deities have like um, things that are built for them in this world? Do we think that there are temples or statues or monuments or anything of that kind that might be like focus points? That would make sense. <laughs> this is interesting because we have to sort of figure out how the oh. actual people interact with the deities in a potentially like spiritual way. Like there might be deities, but nobody like worships them, in which case temples doesn't make sense. But maybe like monuments yeah. make sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, different pence gravitate towards different. Solutions. I like that. <laughs> so. That was just an excuse to make the gravity point. But yes, uh, also uh, uh, that that is yeah. I, th- I think like different pens got to come up with different ways, right? Like you have less space in a city, you probably have like more structured locations where that's set up, where people set up in their own mm-hmm. homes. And then like in areas that have more space, they might do things that are more tied to the pence culture, ecology, etc. Are mm-hmm. certain like points because like there's going to be little corners then on our planet? Are those yeah. like mm-hmm. more? Vocal points for power. Like, is there more power there? That would well, make those so are like, like the, yeah. they were those trying are like to the like the nexus points, right? Yeah. The ley line nexus points. Yeah. Like something around there to make like one of those corners kind of like structurally unstable. Right. Mm-hmm. To try to yeah. round the corner. So it sounds like they were <gasps> they, they were are, trying to turn trying to, the to like straight out excavate and flatten the planet. Right. Or like or like maybe if they destroy the nexus points of the ley lines where they connect on the edges. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. that would like, um, you know, remove the god of gravity's ability to control that part, and maybe that part of the planet would round out. Mm-hmm. Right. What? Oh, I just had a weird thought. Um, so look it up. Dodecahedron has twenty vertices. What if each vertice being like a nexus of power, as like we we're just talking about, is also each tied to oh, a different yeah. deity? Good. Yes. And mm-hmm. so also by. Making the planet like a sphere, you would also destroy every like deity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. power. So they have to destroy. Mm. All so the what happened when the god of immortality died? Did they have a point? That is an interesting question. Is it there is like very... one pent that's just like a dead pent? Please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there is now. It's, it's there just is a now. graveyard pent. Yeah. 
there's there's a crater in one of the oh, vertices yeah. somewhere that just isn't the gravity acts wonky. It's Ooh. one of the places you can't travel through in the normal way. Mm-hmm. 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 That's got to be uh, the hidden base, possibly. Oh, of yeah, one. that's right. They have, they have a layer. Base. They have a layer there. <laughs> that's where it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's where torpedo was hidden. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now that we have uh, layers that upon established, layers. <laughs> yeah. Now that we have that established, we can go in pretty much any order we want. Um, uh, we'll read our, one of our team questions and then answer it as a group. Um, and then just kind of build off of this first time working together as a team. So they were targeting the Nexus. Uh, it was this arch villain or arch nemesis of our, our group now. Uh, we stopped them. Uh, so we were able to prevent them from destroying this thing. Um, and we keep all of that in mind as we answer these team questions. Uh, do we want to go in the same order that we were uh, establishing before? Uh, starting with Amelia? I can go first. I mean, okay. <laughs> I have no idea how to answer my question. I have no idea. Well, I think we're going to answer well, them all we'll together, together anyway. as a team to answer. You, okay. You can yep. go first if you want. I, okay. the magnanimous host, will allow you oh, to go first. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Let's see here. When we first worked together as a team, what happened during the encounter that made witnesses think of us as an as extraordinary and also not a normal part of society? Oh, interesting. I mean, we don't look normal. We don't look normal at all. It's interesting because it it establishes that this was witnessed by people. Yes. Right. So this event. So this, I mean, did we establish earlier? I don't remember if this is a world where like superheroes are just like a thing, or is that like not a thing? It's not magical world is oh, hidden. Right. Yeah, magical okay. world is hidden. All right. I couldn't remember um, where we landed on that one. So there could be vigilantes and stuff. Yeah, around, but yeah. So people um, and super and super powered people might be more common or accepted, but uh, we could also like fold the the superpowers are also part of that thing that people just don't don't realize is under uh, society effectively right i think that's a little bit more straightforward just because i think it may be very difficult to define what is a magical girl power from what is a superhero yep. power for the purposes of what could be visual vis- visible to the average joe schmo on the street versus something yeah. else right i really i really like the uh the visual of like this nexus point is under attack. Maybe there was a big explosion. News crews like scrambled to see this and live television feeds were seeing this in the middle of this epic battle uh, and everything. Uh, And then that's just broadcast to the world of these extraordinary people doing this extraordinary thing. And it's like, we, we had no idea that this existed. And maybe maybe we're the only ones in the world that people kind of know about. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Sorry, what was so the rest of the This is like a one-time yeah. thing. Yeah. And, you know, we're all like, mm, lots of people have powers. But yes, just us. Just, just us. Just us. <laughs> just us <laughs> <Yep>. four. <laughs> it's fine. No one will ever recognize me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I hope everyone recognizes me. <laughs> 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 oh man I'm so awful I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> alright uh, so Sando what's, what's your question yeah um, my question is when we first worked together as a team we had a hard time trusting one another what happened that forced us to set aside that distrust Ooh. so I, I do kind of think if I can propose a thing just to get us started um, I don't think we were necessarily working together as a team before this event Um, And maybe this was one of those times where all of us came to the location of this attack just because we were the people who were close. And Mm -hmm. so we had to basically learn how to work together in that moment. What if this is how I manifested in this world? (laughs) Like like the attack on this this nexus point allowed me to have the the power to manifest myself for the first time. You broke through the veil, my friend. I broke through the veil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. there was a weakening along the yeah. nexus. Okay. Oh, no, but then that raises concerns. Yeah. It's like the only way for you to get home for like this evil thing to succeed dun, and dun, we get dun. a nexus again. 
do I even do I even have a home to go to? Because I don't even know that my home was sphericalized. Oh no! Oh no! Your home used to be pyramid shaped. That's why you worship triangles. Yeah, or pyramid shaped, or or twenty uh, sided would be good. Just something but with yeah. like a lot of corners. Yeah, <laughs> I, th- I like pyramid shaped though. Oh, okay, I like that. Um, and which, which, if if every nexus point on this planet is I- its own deity, is each planet in our system representative of possibly different pantheons or whatever? We don't have time for that, Ryan. I mean, oh I think goodness. the answer is okay. yes, but also we can leave that there to discover. <laughs> Let's play more to find later. out. Yeah. Let's play to find out. Yeah, that's that's yeah. for later. Uh, we need to find okay. someone to GM a stream of us <laughs> playing these characters now, though, because like, yeah. we t- I don't know. I gotta stop doing. Why did we make this podcast, Ryan? Like, I don't know. You <laughs> never <laughs> play the we game. get so frustrated. <laughs> like, but then as oh, as Grant so how I put it that one time, no, then you don't get dirty game all over your characters. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's when the sad fix start happening. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we just okay, get to so- set it up so that they should happen. So it makes sense that we didn't trust each other at first because this is our first time meeting one another. Yeah. And your first Uh, time, uh, you know. Like being able to communicate with anybody. I've been wandering this world for who knows how long, trying to, screaming at people and nobody can hear me. Right. So that was probably a really interesting first impression from a social perspective because you probably didn't know for a moment there that we could actually see and hear you. (laughs) Yeah, you're so used to just talking to yourself, and we're like, "Can you shut up, please?" Yeah, like I, I have probably established at this point, like I could manipulate stuff in the real world with my psionics and my weird magic. So, like, I was probably during the battle, some stuff was flying around with with no purpose, or like, why did that happen? And then all of a sudden, I'm I'm there and able, and like, you're talking to me, and I'm like, "Who's what?" <laughs> Like looking behind you, like is there someone? Talking, are you talking, are you talking through me? Or are you? Are you yeah. Can you actually see me? No, you there. I need you to move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I like. So, that. what is the thing that that happened that forced us to actually trust each other and work together? I think maybe it was like finding out, like maybe at the end of 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 the fight, like finding out that these people were all tied to us in some way, and realizing that, like, oh, we have a common thread binding us and i don't know i feel like this would be like well i would these are people who are fighting alongside me not against me that's a strict upgrade Mm -hmm. that's an immediate plus um Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i would be tempted to say that there is maybe some sort of group power that we can activate like when the power of friendship shines through us or however we you know determine that yeah Uh, obviously is literally a genre move um, for the magical girl Delightful. genre called the power of friendship Delightful. that allows you to combine your abilities in an all-out attack. It's like I also wrote a magical girls game. There's some like so kind of genre know, distillation that, like, that, that has to happen for that. Must have happened, right? Like yeah. by uh-huh. accident while we were doing like that's, that's how we think. defeated it the first time. Is it, it happened by okay. accident, but we were like, well, Love to be able to do that again. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. also, I think that that's one of those like, oh, cool. Like, obviously, we're supposed to be together because right. this thing like all works together. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, something here is working. Something here is so, working. So, yeah, yes, I like that. The power of friendship it. brought us together. <laughs> L- uh. Except for Lorenzo, he's still just cranky. Oh, he's friends with all of you. Just not you. <laughs> just not me. <laughs> he's just kind of bossy. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. Well, you got to be. Otherwise, how are you going to put up yeah. with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Amr, what's your question? My question is, when we first worked together as a team, our opponent had access to some rather advanced technology. Describe one that especially hindered our progress and how we overcame it. Ooh. has it has to be tech from my world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, uh, I kind of envisioned my world being higher tech than 1984 sure. tech like significantly well obviously it's got this weird mask thing that like i don't know yeah. it's starting to become half yeah. mask half like venom suit in my mind but anyway <laughs> is it like like uh maybe like a techno magic sort of thing um where there's like some magic infused with the technology potentially that's cool mm-hmm. 
So what what did they have? Like what's a um nanobots or like uh I'm thinking um SG1 they're those stupid little things that look like hex bugs but they like take over everything and they like eat other tech. Oh, is that the what the are they things called? that are like a lo- oh the I can't remember yeah, what they I know exactly what you're talking about. They like disassemble things right, and, and like make just more of eat, themselves. Like they just basically consume like anything in their path and turn it into mm-hmm. more of themselves. But they're like Yeah, cuz that's what they're programmed yeah, to do. Yeah, but they're also like a high intelligent hive mind of tiny little uh-huh. like bugs. Oh, that's terrifying. Techno bug things. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, but not on like an apocalyptic scale. Yeah, but like at a controllable level where like we first encountered them and we're able to defeat them before they were able to like propagate through everything. And I'm sure Ooh. none of them escaped. <laughs> nah. No. All we of defeated them. All of Every them, single obviously. one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's horrifying, but I love it. You know, but it's probably right. something that was summoned to this world by the spherists as part yeah. of their plan to, like, take one of the nodes. Yeah, it's very possible that they're the ones that invented it and, like, probably utilized other tech and, and everything. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. amazing. All right. My question um, from the spirit, uh, when we first worked together as a team at the end of the encounter, we witnessed an ill omen. Uh, what was the omen and why did it frighten us? Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a full moon and then it was an ill omen because it's round. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I thought, I thought I mean, our moons were weird. <laughs> Don't we have two of them? Our moons are weird. Oh, yeah. yeah so I know, if, because if this wasn't our moon. That was wasn't no moon. moon. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, um, I don't know. I do like the spear idea of oh, what if after the battle was said and done, there was a like a snow globe, a perfectly spherical snow globe, and in it were likenesses or symbols representing all deities of this planet. Ooh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just like felt like we defeated everything, we're standing there panting, glass globe just like falls to the ground, it goes tink, 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 and then just like rolls towards us. <laughs> comes to a dead but like yes. it's it's a snow globe and so stuff like snow is like falling but at the same time like ash is falling around us from this like yeah horrible oh. battle oh, thing oh, 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 yes i like that <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh that would frighten me yeah mm-hmm. okay so that's that's it for the team questions our final question is a personal question for our characters why do we care about the team uh this this question establishes that regardless of everything that we've put in here our characters care about the other members of our team um which allows us to start the game as a cohesive group instead of people that you know bicker with one another uh because they don't like each other or anything like that and it also prevents the the loner uh you know ranger from being like i'm gonna go and do my own thing and i'm gonna be like you don't who cares you don't about the rest of these wolves? guys Ow. okay <laughs> no. raising my hand <laughs> we can still bicker though right oh absolutely okay <laughs> absolutely I don't but know you still you bicker. still care There's about the person that you're bickering with <laughs> Because, like, you kind of, like, ruined my be. whole character concept there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no. Like, deep down, you care. Right, but, like, you still don't like me, right? No. <laughs> I probably have a less uh, harsh opinion. Probably. Than uh, Nisp. <laughs> I mean, I... Nisp doesn't have a harsh opinion. I Just like a you. Oh, one. okay. Hi. <laughs> Whatever. Yes, she looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think I should tell her? I, oh gosh, I'm just imagining the conversations uh-huh. like Nisp and Els have, where like Nisp is like trying to convince Els because I also don't know your mask that like yep. this demigod is bad news. Please trust me; they are nothing but <laughs> ego and and way too much power. <laughs> trust me. It's, but like one time we're in a fight and you have like a hair out of place, and I'm like, here, let me just you know. Oh god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Dying. No. Oh. Uh, waiting for the dramatic moment where you like pick up one of the wheat stalks and like stick it into uh, oh, Elle's yeah. hair for them. 
Okay. Anyway, sorry. What, what were we doing? I got distracted. Uh, so the team. Why, why do you care about the team? <laughs> oh, the team as a whole. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, I think for me, this is like a side of like humanity that I haven't really experienced before because we've said that like, you know, the magical world is kind of unseen. And like, so even though I'm a demigod and like, obviously I know that like, there's deities and they have power and all that kind of stuff. Like my whole thing has been like, let me, let me see what I can find out about these humans. And, you know, but like, this is a side of things that I haven't seen before. And I'm like really fascinated by the fact that like, you all have like, there's like so much more here than what I knew. And I got to figure it out. Yeah. Being, being a demigod is rough stuff. Uh Mm Mm-hmm. And you're thrown off the whole, especially Ryan, thrown off that whole, like, life and death thing. <laughs> Messing you know? with me. Like, what like, is up with that? Like, what is this? <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, I think if I, I, I actually care about this team because um, this is, to me, like, I, the more I thought about it as I was making my backstory, the more I think that maybe, um, like, I'm the f- First, I don't think this is what I said initially, right? So I might be um, revoking some previous, like, sketchy doubt. <gasps> facts Retcon. Like, I know, it's terrible, right? I think I'm the <laughs> first person from my family to leave the farming pent and um, and come mm-hmm. to the city pent. And, um, and so I think that in a lot of ways, I'm still dealing with a lot of culture shock just because of the number of people who are here all the time and because I have dealt with that personally um Mm -hmm. and it's like a rough transition so like I think this team of people are the people that I actually know and can be friends with even though I can acknowledge that some of them are strange um this is just like this is who I click with and it's actually probably a struggle for me pretty consistently to not give away my identity to anybody um but I of course most wish that I could tell Danielle Michelle Mm. but I can't I I just that's great and also just occurred to me because like one of them is a ghost and the other one is a demigod and this might be the only one who like interacts with elves regularly that's why you're the person who makes me like feel like or remember what it would be like to maybe not be super (laughs) powered all the time because like you're the only person that talks to me when I don't have the mask on (laughs) yeah I live a lonely existence, but I am hopeful that it's going to get better. I'm... Hmm. <laughs> Yike. <laughs> All right. Why do I care about the team? Um, One, I think, as a step before, like, they're some of the first people in a while that I've started fighting alongside. And, like, it's nice to have people at your back, weirdly enough. Um, Two, I think... In, in almost direct contrast to our mask, surrounding myself with weird people reminds me that I'm not that oh, that's, weird. Yeah, that's very good. I like that. That's okay. me. Um, for myself, the, the first thing is you were there when I was able to first manifest um, and you accepted me as I was um, because I know how weird that must be. And um, you're you're probably the only people that don't give me strange looks on campus uh, because for whatever reason, they allowed a ghost to uh, enroll to their school. I mean, of course they did, because that's that's (laughs) that right there is super weird, magical girl nonsense. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-huh. I joined the volleyball team. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Were you the fortune teller at our school festival by any chance? (laughs) Oh, I had to have been. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, the, the other students are, are generally kind of like shy away from me, but you're, you're the only people that, uh, accept me for me and, um, and understand that, um, it's okay to be different. So that, that's my answer. Um, and that's it. We, we finished creating our characters. Wow, yay. Yay. We made people. We made people. <laughs> we made people. And Lorenzo. And and, and Lorenzo. Rat. Lorenzo's a people too. Okay, good. <laughs> all all sentient creatures are people. That's true. We established that in and episode now, for part two of character <laughs> creation. Where we add a whole other playbook to <laughs> You should have a whole playbook <laughs> no. for the magical animal 
companion. That would be great. I would play that. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, maybe that'll be a stretch goal. Right. Good. Um, All right. So, hey, thank you. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for our Chimera character creation episode. Yay! Yeah. Yay! This the, was so much this fun. Was, I'm so happy to finally uh, get Amelia to sit down and, and create characters for this I game. I can. Yeah, uh, for some reason, it's just like it's never worked out. Like when you run it at cons and stuff, like it just, I've always had other stuff going or yep. like it just has not worked out for us yet somehow. Um, but this was really exciting. Like this was a lot of fun. I love... Oh, I love these idiots. I love them. I love them. <laughs> They're very good. They're very good. And uh, mm -hmm. I, it is hard for me to believe that, Amelia, that you hadn't gotten into this at all. I'm, I had even made a Chimera character before. Like, admittedly, not. very many iterations ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's somehow just like, I, I don't know, it's just like never managed to happen. I don't know what's what our problem is, but... <laughs> I feel like the closer you are to a project, the like less That's likely fair. you are to That's do true. something with it. Like Ryan and I also both have never created a character in Chimera. Every time I've tried to play in one of Ryan's games, it's falling yeah. apart. I don't know that Ryan and I have like we even played an RPG together. No, we haven't. I don't think we have. No, it's weird. No, <laughs> not no. even at a con. It's no, been, we've done it's panels been, together. Like, we've never played a game together. Like we've never yeah. like we we live an hour Someday. and a half away from each other. And Someday, we've never <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> we went to the same college. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like ca character character creation is playing the game. It's true. This is the only and important part. <laughs> wow. That's true. Wow. Wow. Okay. Take that game designers. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who used to do an actual like podcast. Well, let I, me tell you. I have some takes on that. Anyway. Um <laughs> We are the official official pre-show of all actual it's plays. True, it's true, you really are. Cool. You really are. Keep an eye out for my next can you keep an eye out for my next designed game in which there is no character <laughs> creation ever? <laughs> no. Uh, I would like to see you do um, um, one last job next. Let's do that character creation. It'll be great. Yeah. I think, I do think it would be fun though to just like, uh, like if somebody's thinking of starting an actual play, call us because I think it would be really fun to be the pre, like you can come on a show, we'll make characters. And then you can go have your show and like actually see what happens. I have and, someone like, to send at you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, the problem is that Ryan and I make characters too, and then that messes everybody else right. up. Because yeah, because then they have relationships yeah. and stuff and blah, blah, blah. blah. And they but, just become NPCs that yeah, are need, like, a uh, more messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, sure. fine. Yeah. Anyway, right. yes, thanks for being on our show. <laughs> yes, thanks for being on our show. <laughs> uh, um, hey. <laughs> Um, Amar, do you want to start? Um, can you tell us where people can find you online if they just want to see more of the cool things that you are doing? Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amar Amarhez. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Amarhez, uh, where I do game design, writing, streaming. You can catch my work on either my own itch or the Chimera itch, where if you can acquire this very, very fun Silly mm -hmm. game. Um, you can also check my voice and visage out on a variety of streams. Um, currently, most importantly, the Super Splash of Color stream every Saturday at noon central, 1 AST, uh, over on Lark Network. Uh, and also Chimera, Cave and Blade over on Utopia, where we're diving into season two. And we have some fun episodes that have just passed and some fun episodes lining up every other mm -hmm. Friday. That's nice. it for me. Uh, absolutely. Hey, Ryan, <laughs> tell us where people can find you on the internet. Yeah, uh, so uh, you can find me at uh, Lord Neptune on Twitter, and you can find me uh, uh, doing A Tale of Twinkle and Awe, a Chimera actual play uh, that's going to be wrapping up his first season uh, relatively soon um, at uh, twitch.chimera.games. You can actually get a copy of this game. Um, I don't think Amr mentioned the URL, but you can go to play.chimera.games and it'll take you right to the itch page uh, to purchase your very own copy. Um, and if you are struggling, there are occasionally, they get uh, swiped up really fast, uh, community copies uh, that are available. Uh, and we keep adding to the pile um, as we get more and more sales. So uh, keep an eye out for those as well. Um, I do other things, but 
Or one of them being stuff. character creation wait, cast, wait. which you can find on the One Shot Podcast <gasps> Network podcast. or on Twitter at Creation Cast. <laughs> That's true. Or right now because you're listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't found that show and you're somehow listening to this, uh, I have so many questions. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of questions about that. <laughs> um, Senda, you are my guest co-host, so why don't you tell people where they can find you as well? Absolutely, and as usual, I am delighted to be here co-hosting with you. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's delightful. <laughs> um, you can find me um, mostly on Twitter. It's at Idella Mifflin, which is I D E L L A M I T H L Y N N D. But if you can't spell that, which I totally understand. You can also find me um, at Pandas Talk Games, which is my podcast, Pandas Talking Games, in which we uh, chat about uh, GMing, designing, and player questions for RPGs. Um, and they are all pretty much listener questions, so send us topics. And um, you can still find back episodes of She's a Super Geek um, at sasgeek.com. Um, and you can find my articles on Gnome Stew. Well, thank you, all of you, especially you, Ryan, <laughs> uh, for joining us. <laughs> um, and then please join us next week for our discussion portion. Call to action. Yeah, like that. Like, this, this game just leaves me speechless at times the backstory questions the relationship questions the team questions uh they never fail to add so much wonderful detail to these worlds that that makes the investment into the world so much deeper uh so thank you so much for sticking with us for this extra super large episode and series I promise that the discussion episode is a very normal length. The only thing we have to ask for on the way out of this episode is to check out play.chimera.games and pick yourself up a copy if you would like. If you already got a copy or love what you have heard here, I would love if you would leave a rating or review on the Chimera page on itch. Or just tell your friends about the game about, or about these episodes if they aren't familiar with the show. Either way, we're just really happy to have you here for this series. Next time, we will be discussing this game and welcoming back Senda in the co-host seat with Amr and myself as guests. You'll have to wait until the Series 40 to see if I've actually been fully usurped or not as co-host. Until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.
we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Catano Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time.